aware of the kind of verticality of some of these points, especially on that northern side where you've got the and it look uh, down from offices and then the look up offices, the control over bathroom and uh, well, and you know, and even just being dug in there behind a castle, it gives you a lot. I will say, from a day of being fanned, Clash has made her first appearance, and it's a bathroom teller's hold. Bathroom tells. I mean, I feel like you're going to have to go there eventually at some point. With a mirror ban, you're probably not going to hold customs, so go there first. Why don't you? I mean, we saw Extreme kind of follow similar logic. Well, I will say Clash has been removed anyway. So they're going to bring the Echo, which is a more kind of comfortable, familiar pick. Obviously, as I said, we've seen Clash get played and toyed around with quite a lot, but unfortunately, no sign today. You can instantly see, as we said, the castle is being bought and thrown down. Love a good bit of castle on this map. Just gives you so much more breathing room, so much more control, and you can instantly see the run upstairs to that vertical block. Up. Get that vertical control and give yourself the idea for uh, a bit more kind of a bit more space and a bit more breathing room in a map that can often be very quickly claustrophobic. I like that bit of, yeah. Did you, uh, you were playing around with the breathing stuff there. It was good. It was. I'm trying. I'm trying to find that one. <laughs> we'll move into round number one. Okay, so we can see how it is going to go down. The Dislown are going to be holding on to bathroom tellers. And really, how this is held on is all about the vertical play planes. And it's kind of similar to how a lot of border is held, obviously. Especially with the downstairs sites, it's all about the vertical play play. No pulse could make this kind of difficult for Dislown, but we are going to see Milo's switch drone is already in the site. It's going to confirm zero presence of people in the site. Madman's already in square. He could hop into site. They could go for a plant right now. Because I don't think there's any holes open up a bathroom here for this land. This could be really, really bad. Because Madman has this rotate. I don't think this land's aware of how much control there is right now for Epsilon. Yeah, they've wasted no time getting involved. You can already see they've put bullets towards Maestro, who is just kind of hanging around behind half wall, trying to get a bit of an angle down below. But Ooh. the frag grenades are being lobbed deep in against him. And he's... Being kind of pressured from a couple of different sides. Milan finds one and Astro finds another. And Shermi blocks it off with three. And that is a big, big movement for them to make. Madman is just popping a couple of things that burn ADSs. Easy finds Milan at least settles it a little bit more. Echo rotates the safety. But both of them take half and they shut it back down and bring it back to a 2-2. Two -two. This is quick, fast fire. As Echo is currently lying on the floor, it is now just Shermi. To lock it down with a quick double at the end there. That was a very different take to what Epsilon, well, what I was expecting Epsilon to do there. Um, I kind of thought they would run a Habana here and that they would open triple and they would kind of like push that way instead. But no, they didn't do that at all. So that's kind of interesting um, how they've kind of changed things up. But Shermi with three frags already on the Thermite, that is very, very rare to see. Kind of Fragmite moving in there, but we've already seen some pretty good entry coming out from Astro and Milon as well, getting two very important frags. This is looking really good for Epsilon already. Yeah, I mean, that was quick, it was fast, it was aggressive. As you said, I think, I don't even think Madman expected to get as much ground as they did, and then kind of shut it down and went for the rotate. Big trades and good motions for Disland to try to pull themselves back in. Here we are heading up to Armory Lockers and Archives, all familiar, and we'll see if it can translate to a little bit more solidity in their defense. Potentially, but already things not looking good for Dislan. I mean, if they can, they go to the surprise site and they don't win there, that's really going to hurt you going into these next few rounds. But they are going to go through Army Lockers and Archives. It's kind of what you expect. And we are going to see pretty much the same roster coming out from Epsilon. But a slightly different change from Dislan as they are going to bring the Flash. Six pick baited that, and now they've swapped back round again. If surprise sites and surprise picks aren't working, why not give it a whirl? They're hard reinforcing down Fountain, not going to open any rotations via the kind of metal stairs or through to CCTV. Instead, they're just going to try and dig in as much onto offices as they can. They're nothing on triple by the looks of it. They've just kind of got themselves a bit of a sideline. This madman yet again starts the inevitable roll towards those points. Yeah, I mean, like, 
there's there's decent counters here for a clash play. You obviously have the Zofia, which is the hard counter. But you also have nades coming out from Fipsy, and we've already seen that Fipsy is pretty good with those nades. Pretty handy with them indeed. And as Rens are going to start to come out with Epsilon, they gain control over CT and see exactly what they do here. I, I'm honestly really surprised to see Astro on the Ash here. It kind of makes me feel like they're taking the Twitch and the Ash just kind of just do as much entry as they can. Yeah, I mean, you can see they've kind of left 90 soft. This is going to allow Madman a lot of ability to get some control. They've also not broken any cafe but here comes the push against triple they're shutting down clashes there getting some recon and being the moving fortress and eyes that she can be as madman starts to drone ahead a little bit this is the shutdown and the entry you were talking about and what they wanted to see sledge on fipsy dig himself a hole he can move through it just shoot the front of clash for the fun of it He's gonna pop open above and try to go for the long range Oh, deep, but not deep enough. But oh. there is one in front of the class. Jaeger meets a fate. That is unlucky. Wow, that is really unlucky for sets. I, I really feel like that. But great free fire coming up from Fipsy is going to secure that kill. They have the fountain wall open as well. And Azen really uh, not in a good situation here at all because a lot of utility has been wasted trying to kill this clash. But now, all of a sudden, your fancy wall's open. It's going to be pretty hard for him to actually escape back into archives here without getting confirmed. And there we go. Milan is going to confirm that kill. Azen is going to go down. Milan already in sight in the archives right now. And it's going to push all the way through. He is, is going to get picked up as EZ is going to take down Fipsy. And now, all of a sudden, it's all down to EZ. And the mute is my show going to be pushing all the way onto the top of metal. Just get Sophia charged so they do know he's there. And Mad Bandit is going to hold the prone angle. Milan finds another one onto Rykos as Milan finds the 2k, finds the 3k overall. And Epsilon do take their second round on border. This is looking beautiful for them right now. Yeah, again, it was calculated, it was balanced, and it was everything that they needed to kind of do there. It was exceptionally clean. Across uh, Armory Lockers and Archives, they're going to. Right. The whirl and see if they can get a bit more control and a bit more kind of locked off against it. But otherwise, you know, what can they kind of bring? What can they change? They've tried a clash and it did not work the way that they hoped it would work with a lot of utility kind of thrown and cooked and enough to just back her into that vents window or the AC window and allow her to get torn in half. Frost is the change that Dislown are going to try it this time. So. Moving into round number three, uh, we are seeing the Frost, as you said. Uh, what do you think of Frost on board? I, I honestly, you, we said about how we went against the Frost pick on Villa. Frost pick on board is a little bit different. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of um, other places that it's a bit, you know, there's a lot of other places where it's kind of useless. Um, I know that before, and I'm saying this, this is like the second half of a conversation, like when I film and they walk from location. In the first one, uh, we were saying there's a lot of places where it's nice to put them, where they're pushing in, and there's great points to put these frost traps that are hard to spot, easy to catch, they can be drifted in because the sight lines are so directed towards places much deeper in the point and deeper in the fight. It's less necessary. There's not too many windows, too many jump-ins, or too many places where an unaware team have their attention kind of drawn somewhere else whilst battling something else. Like, it's a lot of corners, it's a lot of hard reinforcements, it's a lot of long tunnels, it's a lot of kind of harder places to hide them away. I just think there's better kind of trap operators and better, you know, battle operators to bring to this fight if that's what you're wanting to do and that's the effect you're wanting to get. Especially with the kind of width and breadth of this map is if you do put one of these frost traps somewhere far away where they're not going to expect it to then know it's gone off and then pick off against that is a hard thing. Yeah, that I saw they really wanted that door open there. Yeah, well, there we go. Fipsy's going to move out of the way. I will see one of three. Probably looking uh, pretty good for Epsilon, I would say. As they sign through kick control on the balcony here. Madman could be pushing all the way up. Going to go with the free fires through the box wall, but now we need to find a kill just yet. And Astro still has that control over the east stairs. And this drone's coming out across the board from Epsilon. Desperately trying to find this entry kill where they can. Nades are going to go out through the archives. 
Because he messed it up just a little bit. He's just going to sit through the room. Takes out the Bloodwire with it. As Madman does find Ease. Very well done from him. But EZ is going to take down Fipsy in return. Ease is going to get traded out by Madman. Still control of CC here for Seth. As Ease does find Madman in return. And now it's a 3v3 situation. All of a sudden, Epsilon decided to lag a little bit behind. But they've still got plenty of their fraggers up on the table. Sherming, Astro, and Milan still available here to do some entry work. Sherming, looking to push through onto Triple Wall. It's look, looking too good. Milan with a very important entry frag is going to take down EZ. That is the match off the board. And that Alder, very, very dangerous to deal with in those elite round situations. Well, now we can see Rykos is playing deep inside offices, waiting for someone to just kind of curve a little bit further around the corner. They have a minute, a minute left. It's 2-2. Two, two. The attack took a lot of time in their favor. They managed to shut down Sets and Astro with a cheeky double at the end there. I, I was just, I was just wondering how that happened, but I guess I should just better. He fragged, you know. You, so like, you... they must have known that he was playing Canadian that whole time. For those of you who don't know, I mean, I call it Canadian. I don't know what other people call it, but in offices where the triple wall is, right next to it, there's that kind of like sandwich yeah. area. But I don't mm. like calling it a sandwich because there's because, another locker sandwich call sandwich. Out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right, and sandwiches just loads of sandwiches everywhere. It's just not healthy, right? So I call that Canadian. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess he just knew. But wow, what a great flick from Ash right there at the end. But apparently for that, he's been demoted from Ash. But, you know, you don't want to give away all your strats. Now, yeah. Uh, a final after this. It is a best of three now, but you're against a final on the team that has proved that they can go the long haul. Thank you for running us through the long haul there. Again, supremacy rule. Love it. Um, I think it's more because Fipsy messed up with the nade. And now he's not feeling confident on nades, but Astro's just like, no, 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 give it to me, give it to me, mate, you know? I know what Astro's comms are like, and I can tell you that's exactly what he just said. I'm 100% confident. He's, he's heated, he's fired up, and he's got the name. There you go, wrong way. Oh, we are dropping down to the first one. But obviously, it's still a very top heavy border. Oh, she is a top heavy map. Kind of trying to keep, it, keep yourself up above. And so far, it's been a pretty, as we said, Linux is breaking down. So, moving into your right four. And yeah, it, it, as you said, this is very, very top heavy. And Dislam just cannot find a site that works for them at all. We've seen bathroom tells, we've seen armory archives. Now we're going to vents and uh, ventilation, and yeah, they are not successful on any of them so far. Seeing if they can make something work here, but Epsilon so far are doing so well again, very, very quickly into the site. You see, Madman again, all the way in, so far. These pre play drones going ahead of them are going very, very well. Sets, however, is going to find Shermie instantly with Thermite off the board. That is a huge pick for the defense, but Milan is going to be able to trade it right back. Doing great work on the F2 this game so far. Season is going to try and peek it out and go for the pre flyers. That's really trying to find the kill, but no. He's going to be the liver of HP now as he pushes. Oh, he is going down on the archive. That's what he can do there, but EZ is going to be all the way onto CC and just rotating around. But he's back to the wall here as he's just going to be pushing out onto Red Hole. There's uh, honestly not that much control for Epsilon right now. And they've lost that hard creature, and that's going to put them in a really bad situation. But bathroom is actually soft, so maybe not so bad after all. Yeah, we see they're instantly making the most of that. Yet again, Madman finds himself deep inside the point, and Fipsy is free to just start farming. But Echo, so free. There it is. Great response from Madman, and Easy finds another one as well, and another one for Easy as he shut down Madman. And Astro is suddenly a one versus three now. Echo and Maestro are low health, but the creep of which they are in enemy territory sees one and shuts down easy from deep. There is still the man above and an Echo drone. Has plenty of time to move around. The drone goes off. The peak is there. But unfortunately, catch and it does not stick and disloun. And should take their first. Rykos with a great frag there right at the end. As Dislan take their very first defense, but Epsilon again, very, very confident moving into the building. And I feel like if Shermie was alive, they wouldn't have had to go for that downstairs play like they did, where they didn't really have the control that they necessarily needed. 
or if Fipsy had stayed on the balcony and watched waiting room rotate, they could have had that round. But small tactical errors coming out from Epsilon there, but Dizline will manage to score the win, looking much, much better for them. Back to Armory. Frost is back on. By at least one. Round under their belt. They... That confidence and that momentum, as you say, is such a burden siege. Run with it. They find a way to stop. Down as we move through onto round number five. Epsilon looking very, very good now. If they can take another round here on border, that's gonna look really bad for Dizlion moving through onto the attack because a 4 2 scoreline to attackers that is almost disastrous. Even, even the 3 3 scoreline on border is not exactly disastrous, but it's kind of what you expect because border can be a very 50 50 map, but still, pretty much in your favor. I'd be happy. To First split well. like, yeah. See, Raikor suffered a bit of damage to the Earthly Docks, and team damage continues as easy. He's still spending up a little bit into the round, but about to close it down. Fipsy wasting no time rotating around to a C window. Madman wants to put pressure on EIC. He is buried in the corner of CCTV. He's currently struggling just to find a way to break in. Trying to find that way, indeed. As drones are to come out from Madman to see what they can do, and so seeing what all the situations are going down. He spotted out numbers of people. This is great droning coming out from Madman. Very, very efficient. Indeed, as he is going to be holding down onto Horseshoe and see what he can do, but he has been droned out. I'm not sure if he knows he's been droned out or not. He doesn't have like an idiot or anything like that. He could easily get pushed out of this position. Sets could move over to the Knight to try and cover him, and he's going to hop into the it looks like. Yep. That's just holding not all down. Uh, honestly, Epsilon, really good info position right now. Not a great map control position. No, um, you can see they're kind of, you know, burying themselves in these corners. So far, this is one of the longest that they've generally been alive for this whole time. You can see that they've at least managed to open the frags for their side as well as Shermi suffers at the end of that maestro. Look at the way that Epsilon have been pushing previously, and there's a bit of hesitation in what they're doing now. Madman gets taken off the table as well, and they're, they're droning and trying to find operators and find kills here, but... Fire! Milan finds one, Rykos finds Astro in the meantime, keeping it on that full advantage there. From a couple of bullets towards a potential jump-in or an AC jump-in. Milan is still buried in there, looking for someone to get a little bit overzealous with a peek. As Vipsy starts putting pressure on those metal stairs in the center of the map. Currently, you know, without getting the bodies to hit the floor, there's still a doctor on the board as well. It's worth it. Not really worth it at all, but I mean, it's still very, very clutchable. Even though they don't have control of the diffuser right now, Vipsy could gain it back pretty easily. And they do have two blood that kind of bear to frag operators. It is only a 4v2, and they are running out of time, but they still got plenty of it left on the board. But one more gas grenade for Azen. He could deny any sort of metal stairs push as Milan has made his way all the way up to the top. Trying to go for the bait, with the flick, and you just see one Azen just gives him the kill. And 50 evens it out to 2v2 right now. Milan peeks through into CC. He gets set, and now all of a sudden Rykos in a very bad situation at 2v1. Just hit in the side of archives. Epsilon recover the diffuser. Milan trying to push around into office. Go with his teammate, Fipsy. Should have flashbang by this point, I think. As he just push all the way in, he sees him, but no, the diffuse goes down, but Milan with a nice refrag. Epsilon took front of a five. I believe that was a 4k for Milan. Yeah, he really kind of showed up. And as you said, they have the fragging capabilities. They have the fragging possibilities. And when you're looking down the barrel of the gun of a Twitch and an Ash, uh, Gary wants to be kind of being battled against. And... That is the example why bringing it back from such a dire situation to make it 4-1 with one more attack round left. Can Diz Lounge just find something to make that halftime swap a little bit sweeter? So, a customs, inspections, and supply room defense coming out here from Diz Lounge. This is the first time I think we've seen them go here. 
as uh, this is too good for them, honestly. A 4 2 split on board, as I said. And also losing the 4v2 with a minute left on the clock. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is we, we, one of the main things for those that managed to match first matchups that we had tonight was time. Such a big, big utility. It was being burnt so well by both teams' defenses. And it was really just kind of in, the, in that situation now where this is the opposite. These guys are not wasting any time. They're getting straight into these firefights and they're still finding their executes with good 45 seconds to a minute left on the table. And I feel like if we see a round of timeout for these guys, it'll be a rarity. So, round of a six game going to be way in. I mean... The pressure is not on Epsilon right now. Dislon really need to take this round, or else it's pretty much game over for them when this match. I would say Border is kind of expected to beat Epsilon at this point, so I'm not exactly surprised by the scoreline. And I think that Dislon have a lot of potential to take Miller. But then we have Oregon as our decider, and I feel like he's going to take that. There is no way just let this guy zap life on the switch turn. Madman finding himself within a breath of the point itself and not really facing any competition or anything throwing him off from just kind of breaking through. Obviously, they're keeping a close eye on the jump in, they're holding on to the server side as tightly as they can and the kind of workshop side as tightly as they can, but otherwise, they can start breaking down, putting pressure, taking vertical control, which, as we said, is so important. And there is Madman in the point. Yep, he's an Echo Drone with his supplier and they should be able to see he's there, but they're gonna know anyway because he just didn't try to gun someone as he is now got control of supply. Pipsy moves all the way in as well. He does have the support. Shimmy with the diffuser should be able to see what's going on. And Shimmy does get the entry. Astral gets another. Mad Mike gets another. It's now a 5v2. Echo Drone still up and Echo still available, of course. Sets does see in the way Ash is moving up with customs and Reckless trying to reach inside to take down Shimmy. As he moves all the way through Passport, no cover for him, unfortunate. As Dizlau and Aria 4v2, they could potentially take this, and they do have this very, very long sightline coming out from Sets to try and see all the way through and to Customs. But Sets with the Echo Drone should be able to deny the plan. Oh no, it's too far away. It goes off after 15 meters. Sets, you should know this. Not good. So your Sets going to try and recover the round. As it looks like he's trolling down. Wait, he can't go to the free fires, but no. Astro takes him down. Excellent. Take round number six. And they move to a 5 1 scoreline on border. They've got to be feeling really good about this one. Yeah, that was clean. It was just everything you kind of want to see. Team to show up. Obviously, they're playing on their map. Don't get me wrong. But that... by playing on its kind of knows the runs and knows the strats and knows the way it's played and it's just struggle so far off what has been a curious to see if that translates over to their defense as well the way they've kind of been moving around the maps and pushing around this maps is they've been able to get towards those points exceptionally quickly and i think that kind of nipped the heels of Curious to see if Dislan responded in a similar way because, you know, before, the French teams that we've seen so far have been very slow and methodical in terms of their road play. They don't like to set up, they like to kind of do motions that try to supply vitality where they can kind of get themselves ready to do the push. And maybe Epsilon's style of keeping the fire and keeping this aggression and keeping everything live and active and, you know, progression growing. Attention. Attention. What is Mad Mike doing? <laughs> he's going for the 360s now. He's preparing. Now he's standing up. He's all over the place. This guy's just practicing his movement here on the defense, but looking pretty good. Uh, so, Renner's sitting good in the way. 5 1 scoreline. This is a very tough mountain to climb. It's definitely possible for them to bring this into the complete reverse sweep, but it seems unlikely. Madman gonna go for the spawn peak here. It looks like the passport. So if they know he's here, they do know he's here. He's gonna get away with it, however. Just 50 HP down. That's quite a lot of damage. 
there for something that was a bold attempt, but they were well aware it was going to happen. And to be fair, I did say, are they going to keep that aggression and that you know, possibility of battle in? And, well, Madman kind of proved right there and went for an instant fight. Camera feed up if it had running. worked, it would have been great. Loading new magazine. Fair, if you're in a position to take risks, I guess when you're this high up on the scoreboard, now's the time. Tyson suffers the hands of Milan, and so does Easy Milan. Finding a double there, a lot of bullets. Fipsy finds another one, but the music is down outside. EIZ finds Shermie at least. A lot of bullets popping against the wall, and Madman with the C4. Oh no, it gets worse and worse with his lap. The calls are so good right now for Epsilon. And then just the information game is just so good from them. I mean, that's really being escalated by the Valkyrie. And yeah, Seth just can't find anything as Astro just guns him down like a dog. Epsilon take round number seven and put themselves on match point on our very first map of border. Time left on the clock in that round as well. And wasting any time to So Fibsy was saying earlier that with this roster they haven't scrimmed at all. Maybe yeah. this is the play, because Vex didn't scrim at all when they played ESL Prem, and they made LAN. So... Is that the play? You just don't scrim? Just don't. And they still got, like, a B. And Everything last minute. Everything last minute, and, and it still works. Win. If anybody's yeah. still studying, look at last minute. Listen to your friendly R6 Siege Casters. Yeah. Uh, Don, who is currently rolling on the scoreboard, I know we just had a brief look at it. Uh, KD flying, which is quite curious because if you actually look at the stats from the rest of the season so far, out of their team, he is the only one on a generally very uh, But he is on a plus 12 on death, whereas I think Jeremy is on a minus 20, Pipsy is on a minus 18. Madman is on a plus one, but I, that's, I don't know if that was weird. Read out! Hardware ready. No, um, I mean, if you want to get into Epsilon's roster change history, you're going to be going all the way up, down, and all over the place, really. Yeah. Let's, let's not start the history book off here, as we are. Match point here, run number eight. That's Madman. Really nice Valkyrie camera here again. I mean, this is kind of a default Valkyrie camera on the lamppost, but it's still a good one. Yeah, it, I mean, it gives you ideas. It gives you um, Sorry, nice place to put one, but Dislown with an IQ especially. Pretty bold. Rotate there for Fipsy. Could have very easily lost his Setting life needle. there. They're obviously trying to match the pressure and everyone's putting against them. And they're kind of shutting down as quickly as they're possible. Shermie with the deep room. I say deep room, obviously, just bang a bunch. But the off point uh, smoke uh, is currently just waiting to do a bit of work. Sets us up at a fair chunk of damage. Madman is currently dug in in the corner as well of the point. But you can see they're trying to clear across offices. Sets is ready to start digging for Tyson comes to back up. Milan is not having his gun tested in a second, but Astro is still playing in CCTV as well. They have a lot of top ready, still moving and still active. Here it comes down the shutdown. Rykos finds Astro in the meantime. Doing very well indeed. Rykos is getting entry kills as well as easy going for the pre fires as well, but not going to happen for him just yet. Yeah. There we go. Mad man, not looking too good at all. 15 and Milan all down to them in a 5v2. We can't find anything. It's all down to Milan. He's been one of the better fraggers here from Epsilon. Let's see if he can make anything happen. Sets and easy are both very, very low on HP, so there's definitely potential. The pushdown metal says isn't expected though. Milan. Amazing will take him down, and Dislan will take round about eight, and we'll keep in this for one more round, but this is not looking too good at all. This is a really tough mountain to climb because not only they they have to take the next four rounds in a row, they also have to then take the overtime rounds. Uh, obviously, you kind of you see 
where it's done, it's not like it's been a steady roll from Epsilon. They took three rounds, then there was a break in the middle for Dislown to get one, and they've just taken another three rounds, and then there's another break for Dislown. So if numbers don't lie to me, and they often don't, Epsilon are about to take another three rounds. I know they physically can't, unless we count the opening two rounds of the next map, but it's a hard position to be in, whatever happens. And that's been spread out across, obviously, both the attack and the defense, I think, to open up. If this had been the round just before, if it had gone to a 5-2 um, instead of a 6-2, um, not in terms of just being ahead, but in terms of it being just after the split and after the half time, I think it would have been a much better situation for Dislown. But the fact that they've already lost an attack as well, I don't know. It's not a great kind of position to be in. Not a great position to be in at all. Um, yeah. It's interesting that now Fipsy is on the Valkyrie and Madman's now back on Smoke. There seems to be a lot of role changes coming out from Epsilon, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can show how adaptable your team is. We did say about how this team hasn't really scrimmed or practiced that much together. Um, with this current roster anyway, Shermi, Astro, and Milan have kind of teamed together before, so it's not really that massive. But there we go, Shemi. He's going to be holding down to the red hallway, expecting some sort of spawn peak here to go well for him, but not able to find anything just yet. They're being very aggressive with this right now. That was it. I mean, they were aggressive the first round there on defense as well, and they actually did manage to get a lot shut down before it even generally got in or close to the building. The defense was down outside when they dropped the operator too, but aggression now as they start to break in via east stairs clearing across the triple wall there there is sledge trying to get a bit more control that they had before obviously last time ella's on the board as well i haven't actually commented on that so far we've already had conversations about ella today with any more but here comes the pressure now what we did see from the previous round and the previous take on this is that it wasn't that the ideas were bad generally they managed to put bullets through all the firefights against this for epsilon they just didn't unfortunately win them and you could even see it although it was a five versus one i think every single member of this was under 50 health so it, it shows that there is balance to it goes for the drone bay and doesn't well does get capitalized on in the end Fipsy finds sets and eisen finds milan and that is the IQ again at half health. So they are struggling to kind of get these firefights clean, at least. Yeah, I mean, it is a 4v4, but losing your frags only to trade it out for a Jaeger is exactly a one-to-one -one trade. They're not looking too good right now for Dizlion. They've lost quite a lot of their utility, but as long as Easy still on the board, they definitely can still win the round. It's like Thermos should be going down, but Rykos picks up Astro there, just holding down CC. It's a bit of a battle rotate from him. As we see, Thermites have gone down into the site. Madman just took Device himself away dark. into the corner of Workshop here to see what he can do. EMPs continue to go out, making sure there's no traps in there from Astro. Madman is holding down behind the main lobby desk. He's a big Fipsy. Now it's a 2v4. Well, down to Shermi and Matt to try and bring it in. Madman getting very aggressive with right now. They don't know he's there. He'll take one down, but can't bring out the shotgun quick enough. It's all down to Shermi. He's right. His pistol's trying to a little bit faster through here. Oh, he's only got two bullets in his MP5. That's why. What? When the double kill coming out from Ease and takes down both of his teammates. It's now a 2v1. Shermi could clutch this with the pistol. What? Wow. Okay. If. I mean, I wish people at home could have seen our faces there. Look how injured Aizen and Ease are as well. Shermi is on no bullets. Eyes is going for the defuse. They will hear it going down. IQ is going to cover from above. And Aizen finds it, but killing a teammate is bad. Killing two teammates is, is, is bootable. You get boot from the, the you rank. You get actually. booted. You would start taking your own damage under the new system. Yeah. Well, they should implement that into custom games. You just get booed, you know, let's come back to the custom game. I'm surprised. We should see a vote to kick come up on screen. I think I was probably going to lose my mind if the Shermanator himself had clutched a 1v4 with a dock pistol. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of curious where all of the bullets went from previous. How many kind of pre-fires and firefights he was struggling with. I don't think I've ever seen an MP5 that low on ammo. If honest, the uh, kind of mp5 acogs that i go up against they seem to have limitless ammo and limitless aim um but there was one with only two bullets left imagine imagine if that was that's just two one taps though
I don't understand how he even wasted that much ammo. Was he just yeah. pre-firing everything and then trying to make holes and stuff? I have no idea. I, you, you honestly don't get that much ammo with Dox MP5. You really don't. And it really can creep up on you sometimes, but... Yeah, there you go. And it's going to be moving into match point still. Epsilon, one right away from bringing this in, but their defenses have not been as solid as I would have thought. Well, that's exactly it, obviously. This was the one point that they won so far, but the past two rounds, it's really kind of gone a bit against them, it seems. Does that want to bring in a kind of pretty effective shutdown for the loose play that Epsilon are running? Um, I think what we're seeing as well is it's good cover. It's good kind of shoulder cover for this round. They're picking up trades and picking up frags, and they're kind of getting the jump on a lot of the Epsilon players that are playing off point. Now, this is one where there's going to be less of a roam presence generally just because of how this point is built and how there's not really too much to do in terms of completely locking off vertical as there is on the other points. But at the same time, with how Epsilon's been playing, I'm kind of curious as to how much they kind of throw away from point and move to the other sides. East has managed to hop his way in here onto the east balcony outside of offices and seeing what he could do here. This triple wall is under the security of Astro on the band, just holding it down where he can. This is a very spread out defense from Epsilon because they're holding down triple wall, but they're also holding down CC and generally tend to hold one or the other. Not spread your defense out this much. Definitely where they seem to have struggled, just with not bringing all of their kind of operators to a bit of cohesion. Bandit almost catches the Texan Dynamite there, but just that... Sets could go above and nade from the Skylight, which I think he just did do. And now it's going to open up the triple wall. Easy as that. As you will do so. Starts to creep around, sees yet another... Epsilon player go for a very low rotation out of there, but Madman finds uh, eyes uh, with a bit of a trade, and at least that is the Thatcher off the table, so that's going to give them a big breath of fresh air. Madman on the vigil drops down both floors, heads through the workshop, and it's just going to find another rotation out of there, and that is a good position to be in now because they are going to have to play on those walls that they have, and they are still concerned about a man sitting on the top of those filing cabinets waiting for a peek. Well, well, I mean, Astro is still playing here. doesn't have a Nitro, unfortunately, available. But just being able to play into the corner of archives like this when you know they haven't droned you here can be very detrimental. Milan and 50 looking like to go for a flight via CC. Echo Drone has moved himself into position. Share me with great information, seeing what's going on to the site. More flashbangs are going to come down. Oh no, easy. That's not how that works. He's going to flash himself, but there we go. He's going to toss a flash there into archives and try and go for a plant. Here's Rykos takes down Milon. There's still an Echo Drone up on the spot, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you have an IQ. Should be able to find this if it is available to you. There we go. Rasho is going to get drone out. No plant going down just yet. It's 27 seconds left to go on the clock. 50 on the flank does take down easy. It's not looking good at all for Dizzler. Rykos and Eisen actually find two more. There is still Echo on the board, though. And Echo is an operator that can take the clutch on this if need be. They're going to have to be aggressive with this because all he has to do is stop the plant when it happens. They're going to have to go for the frag. They're trying to throw things. They are trying to block the drone as well. There it is. Oh. They needed to do that. Echo was very close. But unfortunately, not close enough. And that is really unlucky from Epsilon there. So, 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 so very, very close right there at the end. But Epsilon are uh, going to be holding on still. Just one round away. But Dislown, they're climbing that mountain. Yeah, 6-4. I mean, not that, you know, it's another time that we've seen this. If this goes into Max OT again, and then the next maps go into Max OT again... Um, I think we might need to push back the NA games um, because EU has given it all it's got. It is refusing to roll down against the other teams and everyone is bringing this fight as much as they can. Armory lockers and archives we go to yet again. Can they just find something to tip this balance in their favor? Let's hope so. One more round. That's all they need, but... The fact that you know you only need one more round 
is probably going to be a pretty annoying factor moving forward. But we have seen a little bit of roster changes moving through. We are now seeing Shermy on the Bandit rather than Astro, who's now moved onto the dock. Just a little bit of roster changes there. So just whipping things around can can sometimes work out quite well for you. As we will see Shermy now on the Bandit, hopefully holding down a triple wall, I would imagine. It, I mean, I still think, obviously, they're going for these very wide defenses and very wide holds. And as we said, one of the good things that Jazan are doing is they're getting themselves set up in those positions to be able to pick up those trades. And we saw it worked very effectively in the previous round is, yeah, they've managed to kind of find those battles together and find those battles as a unit. And I think what Epsilon needs to do is just kind of pull themselves down a little bit. Or Fipsy's going to go for a spawn peak. Um, that also works. That also I mean, works. You've taken the IQ off the board pretty much instantly when you're relying on the Valkyrie cameras for a lot of your information. So, yeah, it it works. It was calculated, clearly. Fipsy is just uh, doing the best there to clear yeah. out the round. Strategy, do what I said, um, or just kill IQ. Just, just, just go on IQ. Like. Just shoot her for it. <laughs> we can see they're starting to put pressure Get against it? 90. No, unfortunately, did it not. But Shermi is the one that is still trying to hold that officer's wall against the push from Easy on the Thermite. That chair has managed to double up Easy and EIZ together uh, in harmony as they start trying to break themselves open. Jaeger going for the rotation and running out of CCTV, trying to see if they can catch anybody. Just playing a little bit open, a little bit brazenly, but unfortunately, no joy still concerned about that. Hard wall on 90. Bandit a little bit preoccupied. Won't be able to get the trick off. He's going to have to rotate off towards Canadian. And as he goes straight past it to the close window. Oh, if only you knew. Please, somebody tap the left click. Because that will be absolutely brutal. They are just waiting. Now you're aware, Shermie. Now you know that there's a right there. And you go back towards Canadian and suffer a fair bit of damage. But my gosh, you are still holding on and still trying to keep this as much as you can waiting for the wide peak there comes a flash there's a drone going against it but finally Shermi is shut down after being back back and forth between a two a different very hard places to be in a veritable rock and a hard place there as madman starts to be forward but is droned out but still puts a lot of bullets into sets who suffers as astro finds easy Great peak from Astro to terrain even it out. That's the Thermite down, so they'll be able to get the Archives wall. That is a great peak from him. And there we go. They're trying to recover the fuse that they will do. So they have control of the officers, but not control of Archives just yet. They can't quite do through anything just yet. As Thatchers are going to go down to the sites. So Legion Mines are going to be gone from the sites. Rykos picks up Milan. It's not like you got for Fipsy with a great kill, but instantly traded by Sets. Moves as well away into Archives. Go for the plant, but they're both very, very low in HP. Asho will capitalize on that. He takes down sets. It's all down to Rykos to try and bring this in. He's got the bearing out. Says Asho, but no, the panic flashbang comes out. He's walked through all of his equipment, but does finally bring out his primary weapon before Asho shuts him down. Great clutch from Asho there, as he will shut down any hopes of Dislam making a return into overtime. And Epsilon will take the very first map of 7 4 on the border. Well, they started very strong, got a little bit dicey towards the uh, middle of the other side, and then from then on it was, well, this is a constant battle, I will say, for Epsilon. Obviously, as you said, going into that, that was their map, that was the map they were expected to win, and as we've both mentioned earlier on today, that today was the first time we saw Villa in the entirety of CCS across both NA and EU this season, at least. Earlier was the first time we saw Villa. Why not bring it out in the semi-finals? Oh, why not bring it out twice? We're going to be yeah. going back to Villa very shortly. And it's going to be two more teams. And, you know, this is Dislown's map. This is where they wanted to play. Yeah, I mean, this. I'm kind of favoring Dislown on Villa uh, for a couple of reasons. Epsilon haven't scrimmed that much or practiced with this current roster that they have. Um, that definitely could affect their Villa strategy. Um, Villa is very much, I mean, we already saw it. It is very much a map that you are hitting against a wall constantly on the attack. Oh, yes. And we saw, you know, it just, it just wasn't very, very going very well for them at all. So I feel like Epsilon will struggle on the attacks on Villa more than Dizline will struggle, struggle on their attacks on Villa, if I can speak English today. 
struggled with the words, but it's yeah. okay. We will say earlier, as we said, we did see Villa and it was Supremacy versus Extreme. And Extreme started on the defense and ended up making it, I believe it was 6-2. But then it came back for Supremacy to pull it back in max OT to 8-7. So this is very much a map that loves to play on that defense side, loves to favor that defense. And, you know, it is your attack rounds that are the ones where you have to have to be on point because it can very easily be one of the ones that goes 6-0 to 6-6 like that's just the kind of map it is not normally that extreme but you get the point of what i am saying so i guess we'll have to see which of these two teams can kind of lock it down because so far what we've seen from their defenses is not quite as good as their attacks have been yeah that is that is definitely true but we are going to be getting in here onto villa it's going to be dislion versus epsilon Epsilon have already taken a map. If Deslion can find their map here on Villa, we will be going to Oregon for our decider. But this is the second time in Final Fantasy today. Remember, the winner of this will face Supremacy in the Grand Final tomorrow. It's a lot of money on the line. If you win this matchup, you get $2,500, basically. You can spend that on anything you want. You could buy well. 2500 cheeseburgers. That's a... That's a lot of cheeseburgers. You'd probably get a lot of the um, uh, unbranded Monopoly cheeseburger game. Um, you know, Jackal is taken out first of all, um, which is just going to make this so much harder to play wide on there. But um, see what they respond with now. This is the first time we've seen a Jackal band today, but it's also, it would have been the first time we actually saw Jackal picked if he was taken as well. He hasn't been bought at all today. Jackal getting banned is uh he's a pretty common ban on Villa, I would say. It's not like completely out there. You do see quite a lot of Jackal bans on Villa. It does allow your roaming game to be a little better. So we are gonna see the first defense ban coming out from Dizon. Their attacker ban was Nomad, which you know isn't completely out there either. When Blur played on this roster, he was really, really good with Nomad. And the pulse ban again coming out from Dizon. Nomad and Pulse taken off. Nomad is not allowed to play today um, or any days. She's often removed. That's pretty. That's pretty fine with me, honestly. Yeah. She's kind of broken, even with her new changes. She's really, really annoying to deal with. But we are going to see the defense band is going to be the mirror. So pretty standard bands coming out from Villa. The Pulse is kind of an interesting band. But we did see during Extreme in their game on Villa that they were using Pulse really effectively during their game. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. And, it, you know, we talk about how this map has so much room, how this map has so much possibility for places to go on the defense. And all that is, is it's things that the attack has to think, well, they, you know, there's this possibility. Got to be a bit cleverer about how we shut down rotations and how we shut down movement of the defenders. And to be fair, as we said, both these teams have kind of shown a better kind of pretense for attacking. Um, and... This is a map that can kind of allow you to be a bit freer as a more aggressive defender because you have so much rotation, you have so much possibility, and Jack well. Ella's on the board. Ella's here. What are your thoughts on Ella? You asked me my thoughts earlier. What what's in the mind of Sternap for Ella? She can be really good. Like the Scorpion obviously went through quite a lot of changes. Quite a lot of changes before they realized they finally got it right. Uh, she's really good at CKB areas, and I feel like there's quite a lot of areas on Villa. While it is kind of one of those maps that has quite a lot of long hallways, where, you know, you can have close rooms though. Like, look at aviation, look at how close this room is together, and look at how much stuff there is. There's so much places to take cover, there's so much stuff going on. So, you know, we'll see how it is going to go down. I don't know how I feel about Ella on Villa. I haven't really seen too much Ella on Villa. It could be pretty good, like a, with a bathroom defense. Yikes! He's uh, he's been very aggressive today with those palm beaks, and that is just not a great way to take the round. No, that is a bullet through the brain there, and it really. Oh, wow, what a way to open that up! And you know, if they need to respond to that, does Loud? They just need to move in the wake and kind of move through the damage that has been done there because you know punish them for that punish them for being so eager to pick these fights go okay 
Let's pick the fight then. Let's move into this. Let's move into it. As they do so. It's now a 5v4 situation. As uh, we've already lost that dog main, but Fipsy is going to try and go for the pre fires not able to get anything down just yet. But they've lost so much control. But you only have the Habana here on the attack. You do have the Maverick. And you could go for that kind of opening wall strategy that we saw Extreme do on this map. But I just feel like you don't really have enough hard reach. Like, without the Thermite here, it's really, really hard. When we saw with the Havana before, where it was like kind of susceptible to the Havana bugs, right? And it was just harder to get in. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, it was an unfortunate moment. You can kind of see the desperation on the hands. Sets is underneath, bucking away merrily, forcing them away from the wall as well. I always really like that method of doing it because, it, you know, it forces the defenders to play a bit wider. And I know the last map I was saying their defense was a bit too wide, but you've also got to be aware of things like that. Oh, madman. That is an unfortunate time to start opening your hole. Uh, yeah, that happens. Fipsy suffering a fair chunk of damage as well. Obviously, has been forced to throw a little bit of a comfort lesion out into Classical Corridor as well. Give himself a bit more of an idea of anything that might be coming in. The drones are going through, and there is still a minute on the clock. So, not only do the attackers have a big advantage and a big wall open, they have so much time. But Fipsy drops the diffuser carrier and is just suffering from the pressure coming from behind as well. Very good indeed. It's now a 4v3 situation with this line really running out of time. Rides for Astro finds kill onto Rykos. That's a 3v3. This line really don't have that entry that they so desperately need right now. He is just holding down the rotate in the vault. However, does see Astro tries to get him down, but he is going to go down himself. So low in HP, Ease is. Uh, Epsilon still holding down pretty strong with just a few seconds left to go on the clock. This line recovered the diffuser, but Milon of Fipsy blows it out beautifully. Epsilon in their very first round on Villa defense. And this is an insanely defender sided map. It's especially online as well. I mean, even when we saw they lost an advantage, they went for a spawn peak that didn't go wrong, and they lost another. That was the big operator. They lost Maestro, who was just kind of threw his life away a little bit. And they still managed to hold on. Even with the wall to point blown open with the long sight lines, they still held on. So that's just, it just shows so much about this map and the kind of hands that it plays into the favor. Because even when you do have that much ground that on a lot of other maps and a lot of other points, that's it, that's yours. On Villa, it's not really ever over for the attackers. Yeah. Uh, so moving into round number two, we're going to see a trophy statutory room defense coming out from Epsilon. We'll see a sledge coming out from the attack sets. I'm glad they brought the thermite this time. I really think that it's very, very hard to get places on Villa without the thermite. The Maverick could be good if you do what Extreme were doing during Oregon. They did it a little bit on Villa as well, where you kind of like turn those hard walls into soft walls. It can go well for you. It can basically replace the thermite. In fact, it's a little bit better than thermite if I'm being honest, but it just take a while. So, I don't know. What are your thoughts moving forward here? Because we did see a very, very successful Epsilon, you know, defense there where they just basically ran out of timer. But I really feel like a lot of that is because of the still thermite. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they, they managed to get a lot of control. Show me. Are you serious? Oh, shame he's going to spend this whole game spawn beaking and not get a single kill from spawn. I'm calling it right now. I think it's because he knows you're casting and watching. I think yeah. he's really trying to get some moments. He wants to do you proud. <laughs> he wants to do you proud. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, I think bringing the double hard is good. I think it was nice that they started to kind of get this control, but they obviously didn't have enough width and breadth to deal with the width and breadth that this map requires. Having a thermite to be able to kind of roll in and get yourself that, you know that if this goes off, that's a solid wall. That's a solid hole. You can move anything through this at this point. It is an opening. Whereas with Habana, we're still never really sure if it's going to work. So it's nice to kind of have a lot of pre-fire coming out there from Shermi, who's still desperate. I guess we're working out now why he had no bullets before, uh, because he fires a lot of them into the doorways. Um, but so far, it is just keeping Rykos a bit at bay, waiting for a little bit more of a zealous movement from Epsilon players. There's a lot of reason to believe that could happen. 
they are giving them a lot of reason to believe that could happen. But I think mainly the thing I'm paying attention to here from Epsilon is they were really aggressive initially. And now they're being a lot more passive. Nades are going to come through, however, just over this wall. As Fipsy is actually getting healed up. So show me. It's the, the ideal dot thing. Yeah. He's doing his job. Hey, he's being a helpful guy. He's going for spawn peaks and healing up his teammates. I don't think I have ever in the history of Siege known a dot main that does both. But here we go. <laughs> You can see that they've managed to get the main major wall open. Madman has gone for a pretty deep rotation. Worried about someone pushing up, but so far no one else is there as Eisen finds Shermy. Oh no, that was unfortunate. Enough time to see the man sat there and get torn in half by him. Still being droned. Milan does go down at the same time as well. And Shermy pulls a little bit further away from Gargoyles. Rykos, however, suffers the end of Astro. And Pipsy finds the IZ. With 50 seconds left, though, yet again, there is so much time for the attackers to do things here. The Echo Drone is getting a spot destroyed by Easy, but yeah, not a lot of time left for the attackers to really do stuff here, as we still got Echo Drones on the board as well. As Fipsy does take down Sets, instantly traded up by Easy with a double kill, though. Fipsy and Shermie is out of it. As we see, a 2v1. All done to Madman and Astro to bring this in, but I believe Madman does still have at least one Yokai drone up. Oh, the other one destroyed. The hands of the third, unfortunately. 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Easy. Desperately trying to find those pre fires. This is very clutchable. We've still got Astro and Madman holding it very, very aggressive. They know where he is. They know what to do. And Astro will peek up and win the gunfight. Epsilon take that second round in a row. Wow. This is brutality that we kind of expected from them. And. Obviously, we saw it more on their attack previously, but they are bringing it to their defense a bit now. But they do have the map itself helping play into that as much as it is. Fibsy, 5-1 to one after only two rounds with two assists thrown in just to spice that up as well. It's really kind of lighting up so far. Lighting up my world. How, how romantic. Dining room and kitchen we dropped to. Now, we actually said before when we were watching Extreme lead on the defenses on this, they opened with their first floor holds. The top floor is the more familiar and the common ground, and these are the points where it becomes a little bit more bitter and a little bit more battled. Let's see if Epsilon can find a way to make it work for them. In my opinion, the pulse makes this a lot easier, and Extreme used pulse quite heavily during their defenses. Um, I mean, I don't know if Epsilon really have the same mentality because Extreme seem to have this very unique mentality of how they approach the games, especially with how they were playing on Oregon. So, you know, they, they, they do their own thing and that's cool, but I don't think Epsilon are going to take the same sort of thing. I mean, the pulse may have been helpful to them if they had not, if they wasn't banned. So, yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes down. But, like, moving further into our very as you said, this is kind of one of the sites that you don't see as often. It's definitely one of the harder sites to hold. We saw a living room and library quite a lot from Extreme, and really no other team goes there. I think we're going to see the same from Epsilon, really, but once you're at that kind of after the third round mark... <laughs> oh, Tripsy, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, no. How, how many hours you go up here as a Valkman to know fire is bad? Um... <laughs> Double heart destruction for it yet again for Disneyland. They're going to try and use it to get a bit more kind of ground open. As we said, it was what kind of bottlenecked them before. And I think they want to try and balance that when they they were very good at getting to the walls of the point. And Phyllis, a map where you can kind of wiggle your way through. Milan gets EIZ, though, as Rykos just kind of slowly pushes through. Sets finds Madman in the oh, meantime. No. Milan, oh no! You're out at side. You've got to find a way back in. You're going to go through that window exceptionally lucky. How does he do that? He then manages to pick a frag out of this as well. Rykos does find Astro. He's just around the corner. And you, they know where each other is at this point. Despite how badly this seems to be going for Epsilon, they're still holding on. And it's still actually only a 3v4. Like... It seems like it's going much worse than Epsilon than it actually is, but Thermites are going to go out. Once you punch it. Yeah, so the east side of Kitchen, but it's not going to happen just yet. And he pushed, but just about halfway into the round now, it's like Raikos going to be able to make his way through into the kitchen, but there is barbed wire there that is going to give away his position quite quickly. Flashbangs go down. 
and easy looking to make his way in to the kitchen to try and make a play and go for the plan. They do have control of the kitchen, but the dining room is a close and not going to make the rasp just yet. It's pushing all the way in to try and support the plan. And as Riker's holding down the hallways, easy does pick up Beelo. That is the entry they needed to try and get this plant down. Fipsy with no nitro remaining, however. Looks like the plant is going to attempt to go down right now. Fipsy's going to hear the plant going down, but unable to really cover it. Shermie is moving through with him. What a shot from Fipsy! Denies the plant with a double kill. And now it's a 2v2. The diffuser is down. This is not looking too good for Dizlam, but Fipsy with a bit too aggressive. It's all down to Shermie in a 1v2. Here's his goo mine to go off. He plants more. 40 seconds left to go on the clock. This is not a lot of time left. And Epsilon are holding on well. What a peek from Sherm. He takes down Azen. Very, very confident. It's all down to Rykos. He has a slight health advantage, but he's running out of time. Burns the ADSs, but now with the flashbang remaining, he's wasted it. Moved all the way in. He does trigger the Goon Mine, and Shermie's not quite available where he knows. But there he goes. He's going to keep his position away. He's going to hide away. He knows he has Diffuser. He's just going to hold it down. 10 seconds left to go on the clock. And Chiemi just holding down the kitchen with a prone angle. They have no idea where he is. They know. Oh, no! The pre-fire from Rikos is going to take down Chiemi and Dislow. Take round number three. Despite how passively Chiemi was trying to play that, he was eliminated. Well, really came down to the wire there. And I think you were right in saying that. Someone never really pressured until that kind of closed down on the end. It was good back and forth. Fipsy with an impressive double. Still kind of flying a flag. And I guess making up for the... Lack of that. Maybe it was just saying I can get frags without my Valk cams. That's why I'm going to throw this into the fire. Um, but so far, here we go. 2 1. We go back. Uh, two Aviator games, though. And obviously, this is another point where two of Epsilon, I think you can kind of say, kind, kind of threw their life away a little bit. It's just unfortunate. Now we can see, obviously, I'm. Curious to see that they have still rolled with the double hard destruction. They've dropped the buck, which they did manage to get up and underneath it before. Uh, instead, they're going to kind of roll with the IQ, potentially to try and drop some bandits or uh, kaids from underneath. Um, they're also bringing, obviously, the ash to get some soft open as well. Down to... Uh, down to how they want to take it, how they want to push this. Oh, they did get the buck underneath. It didn't do too much, unfortunately, and obviously they ended up losing the round anyway. I'm curious. I'm curious why they're going to roll the double hard and how they're going to utilize that against a point that is probably going to be well. Yeah, I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, this went pretty well for Epsilon last time. I still feel like it's because Dislan took the Habana and they didn't take the Thermite. They're taking the Thermite now. It's going to be much easier for them to try and reach in the study side since there's no mirror. No one's doing this like mirror hold. Shemi still committed to spawn peeking. <laughs> yeah, in a different know. way though. You never stop. Everyone's a ranked hero forever. Here comes the attention though that Shemi is wanting. Oh! 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 Shemi's crazy! Oh my word! <laughs> he just got deleted. And that's the Habana. That is a massive pick coming out from Shemi. Beautiful. Oh. That was exceptional. That's what he wanted the cameras to see. Fipsy, quite unfortunate there to get flashed that bad. What? Wait, hello? Oh. What? And Fipsy just runs into study, gets a double kill after being full flashed. Unfortunate, I guess not. As he is, he's going to try and push through onto the main stairs and do what he can, but wow, what a disaster for Dizzle out of a round so far, and only one minute in as well. Oh, this has been a round of chaos so far. Lesion, no. Fipsy went for a pretty wide and slow peak there. But they knew that they had two people ready to cover. And the diffuser is still down. Everyone's just kind of holding and keeping an eye. The long classical watch there from Echo, I'm a bit curious about. But I guess we'll see what he can manage to pull out of it. They're waiting for someone to pop around the corner here, and there is a minute 20, so again, the attackers have time in their favor. The drone creeps around. Echo sees it, has decided not to drop it until the very end, is going to wait for the peak to come, but Zafia is not going to allow it. He's actually just going to pull off and leave it as they start to try and crack this open. No! It is taken apart by the ADS. Madman is now covering the long range from landing. There is one, but the second man is to get the drop. And it is... Oh, no! no come on! 
Oh, come on, guys. Right, okay, so, like, let me just talk about that for a second. So, you get the first pick onto the Habana, like, instantly. Then, you get a pick onto the Thermite and the Ash in Study. Somehow, I don't know how Fipsy gets away with that, with a full, like, flashbang, and then no one looks at him. That is just really poor drone work coming out from it, from Dislown. And then, so, so that's both hard breaches dead, right? You see that? Two hard breaches. Both of them are dead. Chat, remember that. Two hard breaches. They bought both of them. Neither of them got anything open, and they're both dead. All Epsilon had to do was play in the site and just play patiently. So one guy die outside of the site. Astro, uh... Astro just peeked it. He yeah, wanted we, to be we, like we Sherman. We also had Fipsy still playing really aggressive in study. I don't necessarily dis I, like, disagree with his tactic there. Cause, like, you can hold down study for that while and you have Legion Mines there, so it's not like massively bad play. But wow, what a throw by Epsilon. That was theirs to lose. Everybody wants to be a Shermie. But remember, it took Shermie three rounds to be a Shermie. So <laughs> <laughs> you can't cook that egg yet. We're seeing them obviously still rotate the points. They're losing them and happy to keep moving on. They're not going to return to Aviator. They're going to move on to Trophy as well. So they did win the first time round. I guess we'll see if they can manage to keep it on board as well. Because they do need a way to shift this momentum back. Because if they end up going to the split on a 3-3, that's not a great position to be in at all. Just... Drone activated. These are the boys, man. Tearing me apart inside. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to see how it goes down as we move into round number five. Honestly, this is still looking pretty good for Epsilon. As long as they can take their next two defenses, they're fine sitting on Villa. If it moves to 3 3, though, that's not great. Because we haven't seen great defenses from Epsilon it's overall, honestly. Uh, on border, we didn't see great defenses from them. They almost threw it, honestly. So, yeah. See how this go down, but Shermi still trying to do Shermi things here and statutory. Just going to peek around very aggressively. And Patrick coming out for the fifth seat is unable to find the Habana charges, and that is going to open up this wall for some nice sight lines for easy. Oh, here comes even more Habana again. They've fallen back to the single hard destruction. They changed their mind about how it was going, and I guess as you said, they lost both of them before they could even do any harder to destruct in. So it's the, definitely the right decision uh, to shake that up in point. Eisen finds Fipsy though, and that is a big, big take from Dekebi, who is a fresh team. More bullets, EIZ finds Shami, Milan finds Eisen. Uh, at least, and here is a lockdown. Sets finds Milan, but Astro finds Sets as well from the other side, deep in the statuary. Easy finds Madman. It is suddenly Astro versus a three stack in a minute and a quarter, which is not a nice place to be. Yeah, he also has no plant denial. He doesn't have like a nitro or anything like that. So he really just got to play aggressively. Oh my god. Astro just deletes ease, but. This deleted himself. Raikos takes him down. This line take round number five. All of a sudden, this is looking really bad for Epsilon. Even if they win this next one, to go into the split 3-3 three, three is so, so heavy on Villa. Because I've said so many times, it is defender heaven. There is so much room to move and so many places to lock down and places to funnel and bottleneck and... All those other words. We are going back to Aviator Games. They're not going to rotate downstairs to Kitchen the same way they did before. But, you know, they need to pull this round. Because a 3-3 a three, three is bad. A 4-2? Four, I just... I'm crying inside. But there we go. Round number six getting underway. 3-3 three, three split isn't horrific to deal with because, you know, Epsilon did have some really good attacks on border. So, you know, I still have faith. I did say from the start with the map bans that I thought it was going to be Dislan's map. Yeah. This seems to be a pretty comfortable map for them because winning this many attacks on Villa is not unheard of. But, uh, it's, it's good. It's good. It's a good, solid foundation. I think Dislan would be pretty happy with that. They've made some horrendous mistakes, though. Especially with the drone work. Like, the drone work 
initially has been good for them for the like continuous drone a lot of t3 teams and like tier 2 teams have issues with this kind of continuous drone economy european teams tend to be a little bit better at it than north american teams do. but regardless you still see all of that uh go down so we will see random assets gaining underway this will be the final defense for epsilon if they can't win this i really don't see them winning the map mm. okay. You know, this is an important one for them to be in. Not only a round position to do well, but a mental Reload! position to do well. They started 2-0. They were very confident. They were doing pretty elaborate picks. And then from then on, they've just kind of been shut down at every corner that they've tried to pick a fight on. And credit where credit's due, Dislaon have been great at responding to this stuff. They've been great at shutting down the space after losing those initial two. They've just had the responses they need. Breaking straight through statuary and master bedroom, trying to find anyone that might be caught rotating around the back of classical. Also a bit concerned about potential runouts that has, you know, already been a bit of a venom in their attacks so far. But there is pressure put towards 90. Scanning for devices and traps. Lots of pressure in indeed. As that's gonna be holding down where he can, and they do have control of Master. And they are going to start to push that way, but Fipsy won't let them do it. Show me and Fipsy both pick up kills. The Fipsy with a jump out from 90 as Rykos is going to find his revenge, however. Bad Bad goes down. That's the echo for the ball. There's a big pick, but you've already lost your Zofia and your Duckerby. Those are big picks indeed, but we now have Rykos with control of 90. But as I say it, show me all the way from the vault drone hole. Oh, no. That is just... Heartbreaking. Yeah, and now, and now he's when he's holding this angle, he's like, oh, I'm going to stay all the way over here then. There's no way I'm getting caught out by that. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, like in a horror movie where out. your friend goes, follow me, and then they die horribly in front of you, and you're like, nah, I'm okay. Astro finds it easy. Suddenly a four versus one here. The diffuser down further away. The bullets are coming over, and it's getting a little bit... A little bit closed down here. Yet again, Epsilon are happy to just fire bullets and it does work out pretty well for them, at least in the end. 3-3 three, three before they hit this swap over. I feel like Epsilon just do really well when they just find loads and loads of good fights and they just play stupid aggressive. I mean, we have guys jumping out of 90. We have guys shooting people through drone holes. People just wide peeking everything. Epsilon just do so well in that. But when we've seen them just hold down angles... I just play passively like Shermie did in his clutch, his attempted clutch. He played passively. He just sat in an angle and he got quick peaked and died. That seems to be something that's going really badly for them. But there we go. Random 7 getting underway and we see the Blackbeard coming out from Shermie. Now, we talked about Blackbeard being brought out on this map before. We talked about how serious that makes a game. Blackbeard makes a game serious. And there's a lot of great places to put a black bit. Obviously, we saw it demonstrated very well by Renshiro earlier, using it as the kind of anvil to your uh, to the rest of your team's hammer. They force and they push the team uh, into the way of a black bit that is buried in and set in an angle. It's not the only way to do it, for sure. But on a map like this, where they are these corridors, these corners, and these quick places to get these picks, it can be absolutely deadly. Now, we talk about points as well. We talk about teams that prefer points, and yet again, a French team takes us to the ground floor first. Not unlike a French team to defend the living room dining room first. We did see it. It's not exactly a great site to hold. More what I'm saying, so where Aizen is right now, I mean, Afi's gone somewhere else to be observing, but imagine in your mind, chat, about the library side of this, right? Coming slowly back to this wall, right here, next to the desk, in library this is really hard to hold on to if you open this wall you plan it's so hard to read it. how many hard walls are in that in that area so yeah i mean i guess we'll see how it goes down there's no thermite from the attack that's kind of an issue in my opinion on villa but i like the black from Shermie. If he's going to be aggressive and beat everything, you might as well have a shield for you facing while you're doing it. Talking of aggression, they're wasting no time pushing into mud. Madman setting the claimer up to try and catch anyone that gets a little bit too overzealous. Going to drop the barbed wire. Is well ready for someone to get a bit bold. And the C4 is a little bit. Takes off half the health and I'm assuming drops the claymore as well. But Astro finds set against the Thatcher down. Realizes precious mounting. You've got to at least do your job a little bit. Allow the hard destruction. But Ash! 
Fipsy through the heart. Gets caught doing a flash though as Easy finds Fipsy and Shermy finds EIZ as well. Four versus two. Eisen finds another one. Maestro is free to rotate a bit closer up to back up Eisen. Try and get the longer angle on the man that's down as well. Astro suffering as Shermy finds his way back around towards the library side and the main entrance side. Put some bullets into the door and it's just going to try and alleviate some pressure to hopefully allow the revive away from that smoke. Astro and Habano is 100% to play, so I'm not about that, but that's not good. As Sheremis is going to get taken down instantly by Easy as Aza picks up Milon. It's all down to Astro, but he does have that Habana. Let's see what he can do with it. Aza's very low, but it doesn't matter. He picks it out regardless. Astro goes down and just allows to take their very first defense. And that's a really good round for them because that means they just took one of the hardest sites and they kind of tried a similar gamble on border and it didn't work for them. On yep. Villa, it worked. It worked and it worked very well. And I guess, as you said, this is a map that they are more comfortable with, more familiar with, and Epsilon less so. They've kind of shown themselves to be pretty solid at holding it so far. As we go to dining room, kitchen as well, they're going to keep with this first floor theme. If we can get all those words out properly. Castle is up on the board as well this time. Blackbeard's still there, I say, as he drops for Ying. The first time we've seen Ying today, first time she's been brought. Yeah, I mean, Shemi, Shemi's all about the Ying life, and I guarantee this guy's got the ACOG on Ying. That's just how he does it. So there was this rocks. really thing in ESL Prem where he went into office, and he held down this angle. He never used any of his candelas, and he killed three people with a T95 ACOG with headshots. And I just, like, I was sitting here watching him do this, like, Shemi, use your utility. But, you know, uh, it works. You can use Ying like that, I guess. I mean, like, the T95 is a really good gun, honestly. I think it's very underrated. Yeah, I mean, obviously what we're kind of seeing is, you know, scopes are always the big argument with guns, but it's always actually refreshing to see when people start to try and roll out new guns. I mean, talking of scopes and changes and things like that, things like uh, Capital's LMG has started to come into resurgence. Obviously, the operator has gone through a nice little debuff himself, but I'm appreciating seeing more of this kind of play from those bigger capacity guns and those kind of app fires and all of this stuff. There is a little bit of damage already suffered to the Lesion from, yet again, Milan on the Twitch drone is just going for players. That's the, I don't think we've seen Milan use the Twitch drone against anything that isn't a uh, player. Hey, there we go. ADS goes down. <laughs> well, yeah, you know how it goes. You know how it'd be. Yeah, you wanna, you wanna get them, don't you? You see, me and Lon just moving on up. And the Shemi is holding them with him. They're going to be moving through art with their drones as Fipsy is going to enter. It looks like they're going to be heading the Twitch drone ahead of them. And they're doing anything they can here. To see the rotate being opened up, Fipsy going to go for the pre fires and trying to do what he can. But more drones going out ahead of Epsilon's attack. They're just using this Fipsy Epsilon entry to see what they can do. As fully droning this out for him. He's trying to find a good fight, but Madman on the opposite end is going to find a good fight himself. Easy goes down, and Alda no longer being an issue. Obviously, Shami is currently rolling with the diffuser as well. So, are they going to go for some kind of candela based plant or how that's going to translate? It's starting to break straight through the wine cellar and it's going to start creeping up those northeasterly stairs and try and find another way to put Fred at this point. Oh, a bit too high, Milan. And Rikos manages to survive with a little bit of a haircut. EIZ finds Astro in the meantime, and Rikos is actually going to pull back as Sets finds Shermi as well. That is the diffuser cold on the floor and Ying joining it. Indeed, looking really bad for Epsilon right now as they don't have the hard reach they don't have their Ying either. They've lost quite a lot of utility, which seems 50 trying to bait out some sort of push, but leaves a drone there for Flank Watch. As Milan is going to be popping into Bicycle and see what he can do, but not looking too good. They really don't have their entry. They really need a kill here. If they want to do something. Milan's still very wary of the smoke. He's playing very good. The right boss has since moved out that area, but Madman, meanwhile, in the site. He's going to take down Rykos. Now, it's a 3v3, but the Fuser is not within their hands. Sets is holding it down. While his teammate of Ease can push all the way through into the living room. Yeah, they instantly rotated their defense to cover it, and they know that they can hold from this side. Eisen is kind of dug in on the other wall of Fipsy, who just wants to kind of start cracking people open. Sets has a sight line here as Fipsy rotates the corner. Fires against the other side of Vault, though. 
and start trying to piss and pincer into library as the teammates come to back him up. Open holes and missed goals, but the peak against him manages to put a lot of bullets into the face of sets. Eisen is low as well. Milan finds sets and finishes him off there, but there is only 15 seconds to shut down this castle. And they do it pretty well. Damn. Beautiful from Milan as well, with the, the way that he does this peak. So like, there, just once. That's all he needs to do. Just needs to see the foot. That's all you need to do. Just the foot is enough. There, mm. like, put that on your wall. Just the foot is enough. That's on the wall. I mean, we talked about supremacy's motivational posters. They have that. Just the yeah. foot is enough. Just the foot. So, moving into round number nine, we are all tied up at four at peace here. And Epsilon are doing the work that they need to do to start to move forward. But Aviator Games is going to be a very different attack to what we've seen so far. And still, you know, like, I don't necessarily enjoy that there's no thermite here but i'm not against it right like you can run no thermite on this particular attack as long as you bring in a maverick i would have thought there would be a habana at least here from ash i mean i i know we've talked a little bit about the kind of balance of hard destruction and, and yeah that they managed to get the habana off a little bit and I'm kind of miss having the thermite. I miss having that possibility to break open because it is, just, as I've said, it's very useful for a couple of the points, especially these upstairs points. There are some walls that you just need open for a bit more of a sight line. And so far, the way that we've seen these guys holding these gun positions is they're not really allowing the other team any time at all. As soon as they pick up what the other team is doing, both of these teams are working to shut it down. And Maverick is often an operator that needs a little bit more time to do what he needs to do, especially if you're bringing him as your solo hard destruction. Whereas your Thermite can get the job done in about 5-10 seconds flat with a good support structure. I think that slowing themselves down might make Dislown a little bit more kind of ready to repel it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So moving into round number 9 now. You're looking at the situation and thinking that Sagittary definitely much an easier place to try and hold down. Um, I really don't know, honestly, because like I'm looking at the defense ops and the only thing you really have to deny that hard breach is you. I mean, there's not really any hard breach anyway, but I just feel like, you know, with the Maverick here, it's going to be pretty hard to hold down any sort of aggression onto that wall. Um, the kind of wall into penthouse so if you haven't held down that wall i'm gonna guess that maverick's probably gonna get at least one kill from like one of those small kill holes that you can make yeah well oh, oh. too little too late there unfortunately milan just could not dig fast enough but could have really really taken advantage there there is now eisen who has rotated put and pushed in but madman is on the table and to lose a thatcher isn't a great position to be on. Milan's going to actually go and see if they can catch anybody trying to rotate towards 90 or around 90. But so far, they're still going for this clear across from Trophy. Shermi still on the Ying. Didn't manage to get a Candela off last time. But has handed the Diffuser over to the Maverick, who's currently burning his way through castles. But finally cracks at that one open to give himself a little bit more of a sight line. As he starts to try and find anybody that is brave enough to peek in. Well, this is the thing as well, right? We have 90 control now, so Asho could rotate to 90. They could be able to get that control. And if you have control of the vault and you kind of push it through there, a lot of stuff can go well for you. But Asho is going to pick up that kill onto sets. That's unfortunate. Jeremy is on the ADS. But no, Candelas are going to go out now. Jeremy, don't forget, the Yings have changed quite a little bit. But the Nitro goes out from right because that's a double kill. Jeremy unable to call that out as Asho finds yet another kill but instantly traded out. It's all down to Milan in the 1v3 clutch situation. This is not good at all, as Milan pushes all the way up onto the landing, trying to push through Lofto, but not looking good for him at all. Trying to get into the site, goes to the pre-fire potentially, but no, seems the wall is open just a little bit. Echo Drone is gonna spot him out. He's going for this pre-fires, but no, he is, is gonna peek him out. It takes him down easily. This is take number nine. Um, kind of feel like Asher was really underutilized there. Yeah, um, I mean, we kind of can comment on where you're kind of throwing your operators and, and what you they bring into the table. We can say however much that Maverick's doing and what they're not doing. But you do, the one thing I started thinking as that was going on is they got control of 90. Why, and I'm not sure if they did. I wasn't 
I didn't see it though. Was Astro putting any pressure against 90 corner against kind of the vault side or clipping ankles or anything like that? Just to give a little bit more of a sight line into the point because taking that attention away and pulling the potential C4s that was so devastating away could have been, you know, could have been something that really worked in their favor. Did you feel like you could have put a lot of pressure across that entire side, right? You can open up a kill hole into 90. You can open up a kill hole just behind the bar. You have like so much room to work with when you know that pretty much everything is on the site. Instead, what they did is they tried to push like two or three operators through what I call loaf door. This kind of a hallway door that goes into aviator. And Nitro comes out. That's all over. Um, yeah, I think it was just poor utility just coming out from Epsilon was the reason they lost that round. But this round doing well to play patiently around that, realizing they didn't have to really play as aggressively as they might have in other situations. So yeah, this is looking pretty good for design, honestly. I mean, they're on the defense, right? And we do see a Frost again coming out, which we're quite a fan of. We're ready for company. Yeah, they've got the Super 90 Frost as well. Laying out the welcome mat. So they're using the Frost to open the rotation holes, obviously. For those who remember Frost when she was first introduced, this gun was unbelievable. It was the Yeah, the Sniper 90 for a reason. Yeah, it was just a, such a fun gun to use and not have it used against you. And if you ever want to comment on why shotguns kind of suffered a big rollback, you go watch videos of the Sniper 90. It was unbelievable. But they're using it for the rotation holes. They're using it to kind of catch it with those traps as well. Um, now, Easy is just going to kind of hold Pantry and is going to keep eyes and potentially looking for any chance of getting Nitro from underneath that we saw was pretty effective in the previous round as Fipsy starts to drone towards Astro. Point. Fips. Yeah, well, I mean, Astro is pretty uh, common place to try and control here, but easy with a nice Nitro. I'm going to guess that was over the penthouse wall. Oh, no. What? Oh, that's... that's... I mean, he must have got it from the stairs windows right underneath on the first floor. There's like a stairs and throw a Nitro out, and yeah. That is, that's unlucky for sure, I mean, because that's now your hard bridge. You're dead. We still have Astro on the board, however, and now... Like, the Maverick is really useful here, honestly. I feel like he's really underutilized in a lot of these positions, though. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they're, they're trying to find a way to get him into the point and find a way to get him utilized and used, but you've got to start thinking about how you can kind of shake it up and how you can start trying to change the movements there. There's a Frost yes. Trap on Madman outskilled, I believe the term is. Something like that, but he is, is gonna try and confirm this kill on the Frostmire, it looks like. It's totally pushes up. Asher is injured as well as 50 moves all the way in, gets eliminated, however, as all down to Milan to try and bring in. He's gonna push all the way up, but the Claymore from Madman is gonna kill him from beyond the grave. He's a quick piece out of the bathroom, goes to the pre fires. Just have a lot of bullets in the map, but will confirm the kill on Ease. He's gonna pull out the pistol, but unable to confirm that kill. He could actually go for the revive on Astro if he's brave, but there's actually someone in. Masters are probably not the best idea in the world, but he's a bait! Come out from Milan! Oh my god, he could actually get the revive now. He could actually get his teammate. Worried about the frost map, but no, he's gonna revive Astral regardless. Now 30 seconds left to go on the clock. Milan is just the smartest player in the world. What was that? That was a hell of a move. Popping one bullet towards and swinging back round. I thought for a second he hasn't seen him, but boy, he did. However, he didn't see Rykos, who just pops up for the double! Really patiently play from Dizline throughout that round. Really well played from them. Round number 10. Going to go their well, their way. I apologize. As uh, they are going to put themselves on match point as we move into round number 11. Dizline still looking very, very strong on the defense. An uphill battle for Epsilon to bring this into OT. Well, if we kind of look at the game that we saw earlier today on Villa, the game that we saw day now on Villa. Every single round has gone to frags. Um, we haven't seen the diffuser go down at all across both maps and both planes and both full sets of rounds on Villa. And I think that says so much about the kind of play style that a lot of teams bring to this map is it is such a battle. It's such a mountain to climb just to start putting pressure against the defense that a lot of the times it doesn't boil down to getting the diffuser down. It just boils down to getting the defenders. It definitely does. It definitely does. Um, so like, 
looking at how things have gone offensively, right? They've had decent frag work, and we've seen Milan just pop off multiple rounds in a row now. We've seen decent like, gun ability and stuff coming out from them, but really poor utility usage. And I'm glad that Shami is no longer on the Ying, because the Ying really wasn't doing anything for him. Struggle to find a way to bring that tip of the spear around to the right positions and the right places. We didn't see too many candelas actually thrown because they kept on being caught unaware by Dislown and great positioning. And you know, it, it, you've got to start changing that stuff up when it isn't working the first time. Okay, that could be a bad idea. The second and the third and the fourth time, though, you've got to go, okay, well, you know, this is it's yeah, best of three and we've won the first map, but why try and go to the first map? Bring some ideas, bring some pressure, because that is when Epsilon have done very well, is when they've kind of brought this bit of creativity and this bit of chaotic feel to this map against this lamp. They definitely have, yeah. I agree. The drones are going to start to come out. I'm just popping through the room. Is going to be holding down the angle? And Raikos getting fairly aggressive with things and now. As we start to push all the way in. Two round over 11, but Madman takes down Ease. This is not looking good all of a sudden for Dizlown. That's a really important entry frag coming up from him, but Sets instantly trades it right on out. Shemi is slowly creeping in from Mud Room right into Red Hole, gets the entry frag as well onto Easy, and it's the Elder of the board very, very early on. These are really important frags coming up from Epsilon right now. Especially dropping that from Maestro. Concerned about someone coming down those Astro stairs and also dropping down the center. Drops the default cam there, but they still have a minute 45. So much time. Here's the footsteps and Fipsy puts them down as oh. sets. Oh my god, Fipsy, no. <laughs> Shemi does actually trade it back though, so it's not all for no. Sets goes down, it's all down to Rikos in a 1v3 close situation. Much better entry coming out from Epsilon so far. Let's see if they can close it out. But no, Rikos does take down Milan, but Ash shows couldn't say, you know what, I'm just going to plant the diffuser. Claymore is going to get destroyed outside Laundry. And as pre fires are going to come out from Rikos, they don't exactly where he is. All they have to do is not throw. It's that easy. Just hold down your angles and just play patiently. Smokes are going to come down from Rikos. He is very, very low in HP. However, he has smoked his path all the way to the diffuse. He's actually going to rotate out onto Bicycle. This is 200 IQ from Rikos. This is beautiful from him as he comes all the way into the red hole, sees the drone, takes it down and sees what he can do. Slowly creep walking around, but no, Astro will be the wiser. He takes down Rikos and now Epsilon one right away from bringing this into OT. Five kitchen didn't quite go their way this time. And just as I point out the fact that we have never seen a diffuser go down, obviously the diffuser then goes down. Obviously. They will listen to your advice. Mm-hmm. Plant, just plant, just click on the head. Just it's so much. Head. It's so easy. Jeez. Aviator yeah. games. We go back to so far. Uh, and I believe. No. Um, Dislown have won it twice. Once on defense, once on attack. And then Epsilon have currently won it once on the. Oh, no. Twice on the defense, actually. Pretty much even Stevens right now. Both one taking an attack and a defense on this point. So it's a good point to kind of bring this battle to, I would say, for Epsilon. As they start to, yet again, shake up what they're doing. Madman bringing to KB this time as well. Shemi sticking on the Ash, which, as you said, is a good move. Echo is on the table instead of either. Echo. One man to rule them all. He's been so good, right? Like, we've seen Echo across this entire evening be so essential to winning games and it's actually amazing that like, if you notice that the other team isn't bringing a lot of iq and echo will absolutely destroy their strategy and it's really rare also on that fact that we see both the echo and the maestro available yeah i it's the thing about the kind of the way that bands played out obviously this is still kind of saw that jackal was taken out of the equation even though we haven't actually seen any jackal at all today um, but then the Pulse and the Mirror Bands, which are pretty familiar bands, and even though they're dropped as information, there's still so much information left for this map and this point. Ease takes a little bit of damage from something. I think they had a bit of a spawn peak battle somewhere, um, but they're actually just going to pull off and out of that and not keep it up any longer, which for an Echo is a pretty bold move. Unless it was a Twitch drone. It could have been a Twitch drone. Milan is playing Twitch. I forgot. 
goes for blood. He's been a really aggressive Twitch, but there we go, Shami talking about aggression. Already rooting in the pulse of the red stairs. Don't think they heard him actually. Oh no. Rikers is completely a whip. He's still gonna lose the battle. Shami does kill him. He gets another one. Sets! Oh no, what a disaster. He can't trade it out. Shami, he's gonna feel good after that one. As he does take them both down. It's a 2k for Shami. Right three pieces there. As we see the mute and the Jaeger already up the board. As long as he's still got Maestro and Jaeger up, it's not all for naught for the defense. Let's see Shami going below the last charge of what he can. This is really not looking good for Dizzle, but they've still got control and they still have their essential operators up, as I mentioned. The two that are dead have hopefully done the work that they need to do before they actually suffer their fate. Maestro, however, you cannot ignore the hole in the floor as Shami finds a third for this round. and. I think at this moment in time, Epsilon are pretty happy and changed off that Ying as well. Ease manages to find Fipsy in the meantime, bring it to a 3-2 as Madman curves around Classical, pops a few bullets through the wall, is being consistently spotted by the looks of it, or his spots are coming through consistently. Echo hits the Twitch as she approaches the wall into the smoke, and the KB just goes, three fires in a battle that Madman somehow wins, but Eisen locks him down afterwards. Yeah, but now they know where Aizen is, so this should be an easy frag, but no, Aizen does take down Shermi, tries to find another one, goes to the pre-fire, Milon, unable to find it, but there we go, yes! Milon, with a great pre-fire, Aizen takes, so he is taken down, and Epsilon will actually climb that mountain and bring it to OT. They said it couldn't be done. They said, oh, 3-3 on defense? Nah, it's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. But there we go. Epsilon have proven that he is wrong, and they brought this into overtime. Now let's see if they can close it out, as Dislown have been given the defense. Well, Dislown starting on the defense is probably going to play to their favor, I would say. Just as we sort of said, this is a map that you do like to defend. They're going to start in Living Room Library as well. Bringing sets on it. He's going to swap from the Vigil to the Valkyrie. I was going to say, I'd be curious to see how the Vigil kind of moves around this map because that hasn't really so far played into Sets' play, let alone played into Dislown's play. But instead, they're going with a bit more of a familiar site there with the Valkyrie. Getting spicy. It's spicy, yeah. Brought it back to OT yet again. This is our third OT of five maps so far. They are frantically trying to keep themselves up there for that big old prize pool. It's two thousand five hundred dollars for winning this game. It's a lot of moon. I think. Um. Ah. Uh, Man, I was just trying to like go back right and think about the other rounds that we've seen. How did we get him more important? Yeah, I mean if I kind of look at the way it's broken up so far obviously it went two and then uh, two zero then three two and then three three then it was back and forth a little bit six four six six But it's never like the rounds that they've been taking. It's always just seemed pretty comfortable I would say normally you can kind of really sense a kind of shaky momentum that goes back and forth like some of the games we saw earlier But these guys when they take a round they take a round they are they stamp all over it and just get so much kind of control and so much kind of presence and between these guys they just keep kind of gunning it and then coming back and gunning and coming back and it's just been so back and forth Jeremy's already up there. I think Ease knows exactly where this man is because you can see him just staring at him through the wall. But there we go. Rykos is going to take out Astro instantly. Jeremy trying to make his way up the door quickly, but no, he aims him all the way. Jeremy, no, paying attention. That is not good. That's poor drama coming out from Epsilon right now as Madman makes his all the way into the hallway. Fipsy does find the entry, however. Oh, him? No? Okay, that's fine. That's just a chair. Calm down, sir. Madman rotates time. I will say, when the Ash pushed, just as the Ash died, the call went off from DKB. If there had been another second before Shermie pushed, that could have been very much the other way, but it has been rebalanced to three. Three, and oh, Seth managed to find Madman, even though I managed to know exactly where he was. The Claymore goes down, and they want to try and bring another fight to this map so far. Milan is worried about someone rotating down via the back hallway, and they do, but... 
pre-fire and move. Very clever. Sees the cap, but not enough to put any bullets in. Concerned about someone coming from astronomy behind them as well. Trying to keep some angles as another remote gas grenade pops off. Still has all the X Kairos ready to blow open any potential hard walls, but that is not how they're wanting to push it. They are wanting smoke to peak and the bullets just ping across. Please pre-fire again. You can hear Fipsy almost saying to themselves, Milan goes down, quick movements, but not enough to catch the smoke, who doesn't really have to do much. C4 shouldered off by Fipsy, who's going to have to just pull out of that small room and not try and put too much pressure against it. Fipsy is going to rotate all the way through onto the stable yard and see what he can do. Fipsy moves into the mud room, but there we go. Ease is ready for him. He goes for the peak. Dizzle take round number 13 and put themselves on match point once again. But don't forget now, Epsilon moves through into the defense. Yep, the defense. I mean, it was a 3-3 split, but as we said before, that doesn't mean everything. They have been much more comfortable on their defenses so far. We'll see, obviously, if they can pull this back. This is Epsilon's round to at least hold, but that doesn't mean they're on a great foot. The spread of frags and deaths is so even across both teams. It really shows that everybody is throwing their all into these battles. So, overtime, match point. Moving on to Diz Lown then. And uh, Epsilon not lagging too far behind now. They do have that defensive aviator games room that has gone so well for them before. They kind of threw this away last time they defended here, if you remember, where they had both hard breaches dead. It was 2v2. Unlucky. Unlucky. But. Can they find a way to just end it here? Don't bring themselves out across that third map. We're gonna leave it. Yes, we'll see how it keeps on chugging along. Getting the hard reinforcements, starting on a point that is much more familiar and much more comfortable for them, as we said. This point itself has been back and forth between both teams across both sets of both halves so far. The point is anyone's take. It is anyone's take. But moving further forward now, seeing overtime match point and seeing exactly what that is going to entail. Hmm. Like, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the attack lineup and I don't like it. Do you know why I don't like it? Why don't you like it? Tell me. There's no thermite again. There is no thermite. They are really going against it and ease is un under an amount cement of pressure there. I can only assume at this point it was Shermy. Like, I just... We didn't even need to see it. I'm just assuming it was Shermy. But actually, he's pretty far away. It could have been... Well, no, I see. He probably did it from the door. Who knows what he was doing, but it was probably Shermy. They're putting immediate pressure against that Bruins balcony. They want to start getting study open. They want to move quickly. Obviously, they suffered the loss of the Habana on this time, and... They suffered both hard destructors down without any hard destruct, and they still somehow managed to clutch the ground with some peculiar positioning and placement. Milan is ready with this Jaeger on main red stairs. Oh, on main stairs, even to get this peak as easy finds Fipsy, and there is Rikos shutting down Milan. That's not good. Better be on flashbangs are going to come down. In the S's get burned. This is looking. Really good for Dizline right now. Despite the fact they don't have decent hard breacher, they don't have a Thatcher or anything like that. They're doing a lot of work just playing off of Epsilon's heavy aggression here, but they still have to do the site work here. And you see, see that is and Rykos are very, very low on HP. Electric Force are prepped from Shermie as well just to keep this study door closed. And so they are going to be able to get off the Electric Force. No, he threw it too late. That's not good, Shermie. Fortunate, but it looks like Habana is glitched slightly anyway, so it's nothing more than a window potentially. The gun puts a lot of bullets into Dekebi, but she survives. Madman finds Rykos, at least manages to claw it back a little bit. And another one, EIZ suffers a fate as well, going for the call and the push at the same time. Tanks the damage and Shermy with the impact shuts eyes and back out of the room. And the flashes are coming out and putting pressure inside. Oh, but still, mid flash, he finds the frag. It is not over yet. For Epsilon, as Set has a minute to claw something out here. The footprints are loud. The peaks go out. And oh, Madman. No, Sets. Sets has had an unlucky time of it, honestly. But 
There we go. Epsilon are going to be able to take round number 14. We are going to go to max overtime here on Villa. This round is insanely important for Epsilon. So the pressure is on. I also, how did Shermie, one, get that kill to start with, and then second, he gets flashbang. I don't even know who he killed. I don't know how he killed that person because we only saw it from this... his perspective. <laughs> is this man incredible? At this point, I don't think even he knows who he killed. I think a death <laughs> happened. It's like he woke up from a haze and went, oh, there's a corpse here. Like, that was just... Don't get me wrong. Like, it's clever in game sense because you know that they're going to be pretty impressed. You just pull the trigger and hope. But that was what it was. It was hope and it worked. Also, you know? just, you know... Oh, mate. Because mm. they don't have anywhere to move. Right? Like, they have to push through doors. Yeah. Just don't get it. It's the thing about it, is they're just kind of limiting themselves and bottlenecking themselves. And when you bottleneck yourself in a game where everybody is bringing these numbers with frags, you want to give yourself a little bit more idea and identity and just kind of a bit more to play with. And, you know, that is where they're kind of lacking at this moment in time. I'm pretty sure Shermie hasn't played this game in like a month, by the way. Oh. Uh, any reason why, or...? I'm not sure. Okay. He mentioned on Twitter before the game that he hasn't played in like a month. Maybe it's like one of those situations where someone disappears, they go in, you know, they, they cross their legs, they, they repeat kind of hums and mantras, they become a monk in, in the hills, the foothills of uh, Italy. Um, and they, they, that's how they train, that's how they train for this. Maybe it was that kind of situation. Like a, is it Ace Ventura 2 situation? Ace Ventura Pet Detective 2? Yeah. It's that situation, but for sure. Right. Siege. So, we'll see how it is going to be going down. Astro going to be pushing down onto the study and trying to get into the game's room where he can. Sorry, Aviator. As he, there he is. Shermie he's going to get the edge kill easy going down so early on. And that's the Valkyrie on the board. That is a Nitro. And I believe the only one available because I'm pretty sure that Rykos plays Bandit Bob. But sets. He's going to YP out. Astro goes down. And that was a 4v4. But losing your IQ isn't massively bad here. That's the Rykos is going off the board. So now, you definitely know all the Nitros are off the board now. And this is not looking good all of a sudden. I firmly believe that as long as Blom is still alive, that they can clutch. That Epsilon can win, always. Power of Milan. Very, very powerful man. Eisen still dug in two frost traps under this window. They have suffered frost traps before, and I believe it might have even been Milan on that window as well. Fipsy finds he's that is becoming a tighter and tighter situation now as they start to try and put some pressure up uh, astronomy stairs the flashes are coming out but it doesn't catch they're just going to try and hold box and ash gets a couple of bullets in the shoulder fipsy is exceptionally low as well in the meantime eyes and is doing work on the other side. Goes for the wide movement against Ash, who has gone slightly wider to try and catch from underneath. If they go around this corner boldly, this could be a very, very clever move from Sets. As long as Eisen is happy to hold on the other side. Madman with the diffuser still has a lot of possibility, but it's Shermie that is looking for this frag. Back to the corner, and there is the bite. But they unfortunately suffered there. No one covering the side as Madman goes for fun. It's a 2-2. Eisen oh. with a frost trap and a triple kill. Oh, no. Well. It was all theirs. It was all theirs to win. They had the mad advantage and everything, but... The shotgun, the Super 90, the police coming out from Dizlound. They will secure Villa as predicted. Very bit cl close to call, though. It's 8 7 victory for them. An incredible matchup for sure, but it's not over just yet. We will be going to our third map of Oregon in just a few moments. But before we get there, what do you think of that map? Uh, I mean, it's the third Max OT we've had. It's the second one we've had on Villa. We've seen Villa twice. Both times we've seen Villa, it has been Max OT. And I think that says a lot about the kind of width and breadth of the map. I know I've said that. It's also been... I'm going to say it again. It's been 8-7 to a French team as well. 7 to a French team. The French love... Apparently. Um, but our decider map is if any, if one is well-trodden, 
it is this. It is the one we're about to find ourselves in. But we will be doing that after a three-minute break. Very shortly. And gentlemen, and welcome back to the CCS Esports Semi-Final 2 between Epsilon Esports and Dislown. I'm your host, Gaza, as always, James Sterner Parkinson. Once again, joining me, the world captain, Fluke. It's been quite a play day so far. Oh, yeah, that is putting it lightly. We are <laughs> of uh, map through uh, six of a possible six. Half of them have gone to max OT. It doesn't look like it is time for that to slow down at all because Oregon, a map we have already seen once today, went to Max OT. Find out whether this goes one of either direction. I know a lot of us will be as possible because after this, some of us are then going to do North American CCS playoffs as well. Yeah, our brave producer Milo, <laughs> the goat that he is, is doing the na production as well for two best of threes so do some salutes in the chat for our brave producer he's going to be a 
indeed. But we are going to get into our very first map here. Sorry. Well, I wish it was our first map, but it's going to be our <laughs> last map of the night. Our sixth map of, sixth the, map night. of the night. It's going to be Oregon with Epsilon versus Islam. We kind of talked about Oregon a little bit before. Mm hmm I said I favor Epsilon here just because of how unorthodox they are and how aggressive they are and how they've managed to win a lot of the gunfights that they found. Yeah, Dizalon, on the other hand, play a very kind of linear strategy to things, and I feel like they're gonna do worse on Oregon than they did on Villa. I mean, Villa was insanely close cut. I mean, it was the the kind of breakdown of it was there was pretty bitter back and forth obviously we talked about kind of familiarity and trod ground and how that translates to teams that are you know kind of able to pick apart the opponents and pick apart everything else that the others are doing but at this point in time obviously i think the creativity is going to pay off i think it's going to be what sorts them out and gets them done really <laughs> so A thought going down from you right now. Like, What's going on in the think. mind of Operator Sterling? bands. Wow, yeah, well, I really didn't expect that one. Cavi Tower is a good ban from Epsilon, honestly. Um, it can be really, really hard to take that downstairs site without a Cavi Tower. It can also be really useful, like a highway push. So, yeah, Cavi Tower is a, a really good ban here. I also think, like, I know from my time on Epsilon, I don't know if they're going to use the strats, but we stratted the hell out of Oregon. Like, we had a lot of stuff for Oregon. So, <laughs> mind me. I just tired to say joke. You just allergic to someone saying they could strat Oregon. I get it. I get it. Um, so like you know, there could be a lot of stuff here for Epsilon to try and use. But I think the same bands are coming out from Dizlan here. They're going to ban the Nomad as well as the Pulse. Probably. Um. Well, what I oh, was they really say, don't like Shermie. No, they're just really kind of shutting down Shermie. What I was going to say before I started dying. Um, was I'm excited to see the idea of Epsilon running a few scrap book because where I've seen you kind of scratch your head a lot is when they kind of um, uh, scratch when they kind of scratch at the surface of a strategy and scratch at the surface of a plan and, and struggle to kind of get it to fruition and yes they have been exceptional at being creative and getting these aggressive picks and getting these aggressive plays but I would like to see that with a little bit more structure behind it. And I would also like to see you kind of go, hey, that's one of mine, when they pull off a move. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, it's kind of hard to kind of play like that when you have such a weird roster, right? Because when I made those strats, two of these guys went on that team, and Madman wasn't really involved in the strat making process, so only Astro and Shami are going to be aware of those if they use them at all, but it doesn't look like they... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I uh, I mean, like, the mirror's really good here, and the mirror's going to be insanely powerful because of the Capital ban. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Obviously, we talked about the bans that we saw earlier, where Smoke was banned, and it kind of... If you're thinking of throwing a team off and throwing a team out there, that is the one where it like, doesn't happen. But it is, you know, it's, it's more familiar. It's a little bit more comfortable, uh, comfortable and confident. Nomad and Kaid. It's the thing about Oregon. This is often cited as one where it's hard to revolutionize. It's hard to reinvent a map that is so well trod on. And you've banned out the two new operators to so at least add a little bit of change to it. So... This is going to feel very familiar. Yeah, both GIGR operators from Morocco have been banned and available to be played today. I I mean, it's kind of like a two-factor ban because Shermi was destroying people in Kayad, but also it was quite a useful ban for this map in general. Kind of uh, having a bit more this base of matches as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, We'll see how it does go down. Milan is actually going to go for the spawn peak, it looks like. This is uh, a very aggressive spawn peak, considering back. he's also broken the window part as well. Yeah, he's kind of being obvious about it, but here comes a bit of pace and a bit of speed right towards tower. They're not wasting any real time now as they want to try and get T3 control. They can see the rotation to Attic as well. Happening on the dorm side as Astro finds Rikos, though, and that is the Ash off the table. A nice pick and a nice shot in chat as well. 
I'm amazed Astro takes that gunfight with the Scorpion. I mean, we talked about how Ella is very, very, very much about this really, really close range combat, but not, not going well at all. There we go. That's just are going to come down into blue. They're going to try and see what they can do here, but Madman with a peep. Easy case to have. It's not good for Dizlan. There comes Madman digging himself into that corner. Milan finds ease as well, and Sets gets Milan, gets a bit of revenge there. Quick thinking from the buck, quicker bucking. As he opens up a nice little sight hole down towards that Harry Potter side rotation. And you can see Aizen is waiting to drop down as well from the top of T3. A lot of fear from the pair. Obviously, they still have a huge amount of work ahead of them, and the diffuser is on the floor as well. And they know they're up against a team that is more than comfortable to be very active and very aggressive with these. Yeah, it definitely can be, but a 4v2 situation and you don't have your hard reacher anymore. Sets and Aizen is all down to them. Sets just push through onto the rear stage. This L hatch is not reinforced. That's not good. And that has now given you your entry into the site. Could potentially nade out and push. I think there's still an ADS up though where Madman's playing, so just inside of the e box, so it could be pretty bad. Pipsy, of course, is holding down the diffuser. Nades are going to come through onto the blue door. Advan's still playing pretty aggressively, though. You obviously, as you said, have that L hatch open. Madman is trying to keep it as covered as possible, but they're just going to push straight from tower stairs and try and dig into Harry Potter. They do drop straight onto Electric and straight into point as well. Sets finds Madman, but no! Shermy gets sets, and there's Pipsy locking it down as Aizen suffers the end of that round it goes to the defenders interesting it's it's really aggressive how epsilon are playing it's not necessarily against it right like oregon's traditionally a map they want to try and play aggressively also on the flip side of that as well defenders want to play aggressively to attack the attacker's utility so it's good don't expect that level of aggression, especially from an Ella peaking that wide, but it's uh it's going well so far. Moving into round number two, however, we are going to be kids dorms dorms main whole defense. So while Epsilon are playing this really aggressively, they're not playing it exactly unorthodox. They do seem to be going to the default sites. The capital ban does still make things interesting, although I think it affects a lot more on this downstairs site than it is going to affect the rest of the sites. Yeah. Yeah, we often talk about how good he is at the moment and how powerful he is at the moment, but you've got to think of what you'll be using him for on a map specifically and how you often see teams push. And that laundry rotation is such a big one to lock down. That's why people are dedicated to buy an extra reinforcement up against that classroom wall and just generally pushing laundry in general. Um, it's, it's a big one to try and hold. Whereas on points like this, normally you're feet in the ground quite close, putting those capital spooks in certain corners can often have negative effects because it can catch your players and slow your team down that's trying to move in and amongst, whereas on the basement point you have a lot of depth still, a lot of height to kind of keep that control. Pipsy's still looking for some aggression early on with that duck, trying to catch anyone that goes to the bottom of a small tower, but Isaac knows it's open, you'd be a fool to try and peek that aggressive against it. Wow. He's gonna get picked. He also just decided not to contest it whatsoever. Probably a good bet against the Doc ACOG and Fipsy. It's not really a situation you want to involve yourself in. But Azen is gonna be all the way up. He's gonna impact the barricade with the window. And Fipsy's rotating all the way up to the top of white. This is a really cheeky angle for Fipsy right now, but it's gonna be right. So he picks his first kill of the round. Milan goes down. And it's 5v4. Madman's still buried inside classroom, popping some bullets towards Garage. Um, again, Rykos finds his second of the round, really working well with the rest of the team. They're funneling them in as they start to get the dorms open, and Aizen finds Astro, and this is a very, very good takedown of Epsilon's defense up here in dorms. They're just pushing them into rotations and cutting them in half when they try and make them. They do have that open as Doc gets himself healed up. The C4 catches nobody as Fipsy suffers a lot. He just goes back to the red stairs, trying to get himself a bit of a breather. Juice himself up. There's more damage coming through. The mirror goes to aggressively peek against it and does work. They're on the other side of the mirror window. 
They're just gonna pop it open, but they're being watched from so many sides. Finds one, finds one! Yeah, Seth, not Seth. enough. But Seth's just gonna jump in. He takes down Shemi, he takes down Fipsy. Dizzle and take right over two. And, uh, kind of an expected attack win. I'm kind of surprised there was no Maestro from Epsilon here. There, I mean, it could have been nice to have a little bit more solidity about that kind of watching force them to dedicate a little bit more utility oh. towards dropping your. Yeah, obviously, because Maestro is banned hmm. instead of. Okay, it's been a very long day. <laughs> I wonder yeah. if they had a bulletproof on the wardrobe. I didn't quite see if Fipsy brought a bulletproof or if you put it down, but that's normally like a pretty normal place. Like, you know, the wardrobe that faces onto the armory door? Yes. Normally nice. you see that go down. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they change, if anything, as we go uh, back to the dorms. Obviously, we saw them get a little bit aggressive um, at the very beginning of this, and then they kind of fell back to point. But the speed at which Dislaun started to put direct pressure onto the main door and garage and the armory side it really kind of, I think, it caught Epsilon a bit out of kilter and a bit of kilter, and they kind of struggled with finding their feet back towards the ground that was already no so fibsy doesn't bring the the bulletproof in he brings bombs kind of interesting so um also the thing we want to talk about is this mirror window right that one. this mirror window right it's like last time they reinforced it on top of white stairs um but this time they've left it soft i think it's better to leave it soft honestly because otherwise you could just do exactly what they did and just go straight up to the mirror window and you can plant next to it there's not really much you can do about it already he's still going for spawn peaks but at least he's doing a little bit closer to home this time but they are putting the intense pressure that they did last time as well Lizen is the only one to spawn on the far side by small tower the rest going instantly for that main and armory push shermy still doing a bit of architecture easy if he'd have drawn a little bit earlier could have potentially caught the mirror very much with her uh, mirror window down, but there is that pickup against Milon, who tries to jump out against Ease, but does not catch it. That's a nice take there as they can start to close down against a Jaegerless defense in Armory. They have done, and Ease, as mentioned, would repel all the way through into Armory, and he finished the inevitable goon mine that he knew was there, but he couldn't find, unfortunately. His bad man rotates all the way up at the attic. Now it's control here, and he could play here aggressively, top of this kid's bedroom windows attack but it's not going to do that just yet show me with a nice shield angle yes but it's very typical of a maestro play to play he's going to be showing me plays it but madman and astro both go down now a 2v5 epsilon not really doing too well on this attack show me gets thrown out unfortunately as azen finds another one it's all down to show me but no he can't find one dislow and take the upstairs attack flawlessly and epsilon just getting torn apart here Clean and pretty tasty uh, and it really kind of shows that they learned from the first and they just went through onto the second and really kind of took control of that armory side very quickly obviously we saw the Jaeger go for a jump out and try to catch them unaware but so far those strategies just aren't working so well for them no they really aren't they're getting torn apart out here but it's gonna be a round number four getting it down to the laundry room supply room defense this isn't like a disaster for Epsilon. Not winning that top floor is definitely going to hurt you quite a lot. I think the Maestro ban has affected quite a lot here, but it's weird because Epsilon were the ones who banned Maestro and then not bringing Bulletproof themselves. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we can kind of talk about the curious, the curious bans here at this point. Obviously, they took the hold here. They were a little bit aggressive and it played very well to their favor, but so far we've seen their aggression kind of suffer them on dorm. So I'm curious to think Changing if Dislaun will be able to actually shut down the aggression this time around and see if they can find another way, or if Epsilon can kind of use this round to find their feet, bring it back to a 2-2, and maybe get a bit more wind under their wings. Yeah. Hey. Yes, there we go. Now the traps are going to go up from Astro. And this was such a successful defense last time that I, I don't see Dizline winning it again. It's just so hard to attack this basement without the Capitano. I feel like you've really got to concentrate quite a lot on this kind of like backside take. 
But that's what they did. They did a big tower take, and then Dizla just got torn apart by really heavy peaks coming out from Epsilon. Obviously, it is dug in. Shermi is wanting the push against Boiler Room here and begging them to try and charge through. Uh, but you can see they're draining out tower, and Legion is moving up on the top of it, trying to again find the firefight. They are not kind of letting off on that aggression as <laughs> that just go out to try and catch any digital electronics. But that is a lot of resources dedicated to clearing Big Tower currently. I think they were thinking that maybe there was going to be a Jaeger playing there with ADSs or T3, but yeah, you are right. It's a lot of resources to take, but if you've got big tower control, you have your entry into sight. They notice there's a reinforcement and an asset rotation here. Like, that's a lot to put in, but it's also reasonable to put it in. Crack their way through onto Attic. They're opening up the hatches. The hatch is soft and so is electric. As Shermi gets dropped from a two-story killer. And he's wowing that as well. Nice movement there. But waiting for someone to get a bit aggressive on Garage, as they did in the previous round. But no bites so far. And there's a minute 30 left. But Mira is off the board. Way up high. And Gipsy suffers a fate as well. Bullets coming down from the bottom of Big Tower. EOZ. They're getting some good pressure on as the IQ. And now they are taking control of meeting and taking control of those hatches. Astro is going to try and rotate back towards the back side of meeting and maybe put a bit more pressure in two drones dropped and they are going to be well aware of their encroaching presence Loading new mag. yeah definitely doing very well indeed madman still holding down however oh set takes him down it's going to be all down to astro and milan to try and hold it back but there we go they get a three piece between them and that's a two v two astro desperately trying to move up to deny the plant but easy will take him down this line take run number four and their first successful attack on the basement this line really turning things around here on Orion. Yeah, three, one. They've just seemed so in control of these past couple of rounds. And yeah, it was a bit of back and forth and great movement there from uh, Epsilon to bring it back to a 2-2. Two -two. Down, it was setting themselves up for a post plant. It was... Good movement. Yeah, good movement indeed. And really complete turnaround. And I'm glad that this line are really carrying the momentum that they brought through from Villa. Epsilon, not really having the momentum, it would seem. But don't forget, on Border, we saw them lose multiple of their defenses and a quite a lot of their attacks. They won Border 5-1 after their attack rounds. Their defenses were completely different. And maybe they're just an attacker team. Yeah, that's the thing. Everyone... Always talks about the balances of maps, the balances of operator bands. The balances of teams is just as important because some teams thrive on their attack rounds. That's why they're better. That's where they kind of find themselves with more control and more ideas of how to push. And some teams thrive better on defense. It's, it's always a good balance of players and skills and ideas that really kind of create seats because it is that exceptionally dynamic game where technically anything can work if you can make it work. And you'll always see teams trying to make things work. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I think that as well, with Epsilon's playstyle, we've seen them time and time again, when they've been just holding angles and just sitting there, they've just died. Constantly, just got a quick peek and they've died. We've seen it time, time, time again. When they're the ones who are being aggressive, then they're the ones who are peaking, they generally tend to lose to win their fights, right? And on defense, you're tending to hold angles. And really, defense across the board has not been good for them. But yeah, attack has been much better. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think when they've had a little bit more um, kind of fire in what they're doing, and they've kept it, the map a bit more active and a bit more hot and a bit more kind of troubling for Disladown to find their feet on it, that is when they've definitely been shining. But so far as we can see, they're passive, they're struggling to try and find their ways. And obviously we have had, you know, we're on the third map of a best of three. One went to a T and it is uh, midnight where we're at. And these guys are getting later and later. So a lot of it is coming down to potentially they just, they don't have that vibe because they're very tired at this point because it does take a lot out of you playing this tier of Siege for such a long time, but Astro managed to at least shut down right off, and that is Twitch oh. off, and then gets a second with a beautiful take against the IC. Let's go, Astro. Beautiful. 
entry kills coming up from him, and they've still not shut him down. 2k coming up from him, unless there we go, IQ and Twitch both down. Asho still playing sandbags and still playing very, very, very passive here as Easy pushes through into split on flag, but Seth eventually takes down Asho. But he's wasted so much time and he's done so much effort as well. Sets does take control of Attic. Milon getting aggressive with it out onto the stage. Easy goes down and sets from above. Shuts down Sherry, but Milon of Fipsy clean it all up. Epsilon take round over five and a great base with defense. Pretty much win and lost around meeting. And they gave themselves a bit more room. They didn't have the battle fall down to the basement floor as they did in the previous take and it worked so much better for them. They allowed themselves that groundwork, that ability to give a bit more life into the defense and slow down Dislan just by having a bit more active pressure. Now, they have managed to shift it. There is one more. Can they make it a 3-3 slip before we drop over? They are heading to dorms and this is not a fantastic hold for them, but if they keep a little bit more activity in it, it could have gone the other way. Sets really doesn't want Dizla to be knocked out here at this early stage. He's going for that spot with a 3.0 KD right now. 9-3. He's doing very, very well for himself. Definitely. I mean, it's always good to see players kind of light up on particular maps and, and kind of especially in this late in the day stage where you've really got to pull out those plays and pull out those cuts and pull out those movements and keep that going for this long a time yeah. it's good to see that a player can kind of wave that flag yeah just turned 1am in france so not good <laughs> not good for disline i would say these guys are younger though they're, they're younger players they got a lot they should have a lot of energy they got energy yeah they can do they got energy but <laughs> there is Fipsy. the you go Fipsy with the spawn peak unable to get anything just yet but he's been doing that quite a lot he's taking shamey's role on the duck today on oregon instead nice cam coming out there from madman pretty default cam again this is the twitch drone did he spawn peak a twitch drone spawn peak a twitch drone did his did he get the block he couldn't have got the black eye from there surely no. there's no way a twitch drone just sniped this black eye twitch drones can't look up okay. can look at the guy i popped up with that uh, we can see they're starting to enter via garage now and uh, trying to dig and get control of armory for the first time ever. They haven't thrown someone in armory, uh, but they have managed to throw a lot of bullets into ease. As I think it was Milan from the far side on T1 ran out and put some bullets into them as they swung in. And now they're going to see if they can pick someone off on the other side. But this is the first time we talked about this. We talked about the control of T3 and what does Lan have expected Epsilon to have and be doing and for the first time they haven't done a big major clear of it this has happened oh. Astro manages to find the kill but Milan is really causing problems from tower and this is what we want to see from Epsilon we want to see them be this aggressive we want to see them finding early fights and doing what they can. Now, Sets does push all the way through onto the construction site. Still trying to find those kills where he can, but a 5v4. Epsilon are really doing the work where they can. Rykel's going to hook through into the showers to see what he can do here instead. Dislan are really split up right now on this attack. Yeah, and I think this is very much playing into Epsilon's favor. They love they can throw a bit of chaos in. Rykos gets traded out, but does find Astro in the meantime, pushing against... Uh, Zulu has Ease managed to finally start to careen across from Armory with Easy buried inside Master as well, but he's actually going to go for the wider push here. They do know that Jaeger is coming up behind them, and there goes Milan. It's 3-3 with a minute left. Still a load of time as Fipsy finds sets, and it's now just the Armory push left alive. Yeah, it's all down to Easy and Ease. As we see what they can do here, as Easy just push all the way through. They do have Gen Wall open somewhat, and Easy does have the Diffuser. He's going to drop it, pick it back up, play hot potato with it. 30 seconds left to go on the clock. Not a lot of plant now left from the defense. And it's like Easy's going to try and go for a rotate up onto White Stairs instead. This could work well for him if there wasn't a man prone here. I don't think they're going to realize a madman's here! Oh no! What a bad peek from Madman! He will go down for it. And now it's a 2v2, but Easy and Ease have both a very, very low on HP right now. Yeah, those leads are really looking very, very frightening. Good be ones on there. Easy with one. Just has to push around and get this final frag on the Lesion. And no, Shermie! 
clutches it out. The Legion on one and the gun on the other. And that is why he is such a beast. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Coming out there from Epsilon, bringing it back into 3-3. Three, three. But that is not an ideal scoreline to be on. We said the exact same thing about Villa, though, and they still brought it back. Yeah, that we did. They are here to prove us wrong. And to be fair, that's always good because it shows that you can still do anything in Siege. Because what we quote is statistics and nerd stuff. And what these guys do is they try and break those records and break those games and find ways to do what numbers tell us is impossible. We are going to open up on to first. Echoes on the board as well as Smoke, the man who was banned out the last time round we were here. So, round number seven. We're going to see a laundry defense coming out of it. Madman bringing out the Ying here. But I think we've seen like everyone from Epsilon play everyone else's role except Milan, who's always been playing like Twitch and Jaeger. Yeah, uh, Milan is very comfortable doing what Milan wants to do. Um, but yeah, as you've said, I mean, Madman has now picked up the Ying, which we saw being flirted by uh, Shermie earlier on. Shermie is going to stick on the Ash, that to be fair, worked better than when they were on the Ying. And they've got the hard destruction and leave that to put those hatches and hatch control as well. But I'm curious to see how they decide to go against this. Obviously, a basement take is not the easiest in the world especially with mirror still on the board as well and they've also got smoke they've also got echo they have a lot of possibility to keep control of those main stairs but it looks like they're going for a quick tower hold sets is going to be the first to find a fight here buried on the bottom of tier two, tier one even shoots through and shirley oh. finds sets with some great teamwork there you can see the drones whizzing round and that was some great calls and great coordination. Great, yeah. Great communication coming up from Epsilon so far. Shame to get that great entry kill into the sets. Jaeger dying early on isn't a massive deal, but it is a person off the table regardless. Uh, Shame will drone out onto Balloon. We'll see that nothing is indeed there. And the mirror window on the backside is actually be popped as well. I would assume from Mill on Switcher. Potentially, but I would be amazed. Uh, only because Milan just goes for people. That's true. Go for objectives, just people. But Jeremy's trying to keep the deep look down from meeting as they go. Astro suffers the C4 from underneath. They're just going to try and flash and go for the revive here and make sure they don't get caught by another C4. But there is easy circling around the bottom of Electric Hatch to take care of Fipsy. As Shermie still wants to put some pressure on from underneath, but they are struggling in these hatch battles. They are indeed struggling. It's going to be a 4v4 situation, however. They do still have the Ying on the table, and the Candelas could be a very important factor when pushing this back side. We still have two shotguns on the table. I hope it's going to be Ease and Rykos, both with the shotguns in hand covering each side. It's like Astro is getting ready for the drop as the push is starting to come down. Candelas go out. Milan makes his way all the way through into Boiler as Asho gets his entry kill, but instantly denied by Azen. Lots of trades coming out from both sides here. One minute left to go on the clock. And it's all down to Shermie and Milan to make this attack happen. They do not have control of the diffuser. Unfortunately, he's left upstairs in the meeting hall. They just got to frag out here where they can. They're going to breach all the way into E Box where they can. Milan just trying to get in here, trying to get that entry frag. He's going to move into E Box as well. Shemi holding down the angle where he can. Milan gets a kill onto Easy. They push into the hallway, but Ease takes down Shemi. It's all down to Milan in a 1v2 clutch situation to try and bring this in for Epsilon. Push all the way in. It's the barbed wire. He gets out of the bait, but no, he can't get out another. As the peaks come through, but just securely. Is he going to peek out in the hallway? He knows someone should be there, but he can't bait out any sort of peek right now. Milan has been a great fragger so far. This is his time to shine. He sees someone, but no, the Nitro! Oh, no! Milan loses the round, unfortunately. Dizline will take round number seven. Their first defense on laundry, but man, was that close. It really was. Obviously, I think you commented that the diffuser they left upstairs. At that point, I'm not sure if that was just miscommunication as they started going for the push. They led with the Ying, and they kind of went all frags at blazing unfortunately we didn't see the trades that went down or who got flashed by who but came down to a little bit of a, a little bit of a stalemate that the defenders managed to take control of so 
Round number eight getting away. We see a kid storm storms main hall defense. I think Epsilon had a really good idea there, but pretty poor execution. As you said, we don't really get to see exactly what happened with the Candelas. But, you know, things clearly just didn't work out well for them. No, it wasn't the greatest kind of coordination on the push. Obviously, we didn't quite see what went completely wrong. I think Madman did manage to find one in amongst it, but then was quickly traded back on. So it was a good response from this round, if anything. But I guess we'll see a little barrier here. They have removed uh, it, and obviously Milan is still bringing that F2, still going for those guns. Um, but they've got the art destruction, they've got a lot of soft, they've got a lot of possibility to get in underneath. And I'm curious to see how they decide to take this because before they set up very quickly, they got tower and went straight for the point, but they're going to try and be a little bit wider, a little bit bolder. I'm curious to see. Yeah, I mean, like, this is really going to be all about if they can win this attack or not because this defense was so hard for Epsilon, and then when it came through onto the other side, it just didn't go well. So, it's really going to be Epsilon who have to win at least two attacks in for really them to break it in. It was very close on laundry, but that's unfortunate. Shami going to go down very, very early from Spompy coming out from Ease all the way from T3. That is poor drone work coming out from Epsilon. That's it. That is a little bit of sweet revenge against Shami from the amount of times that he's managed to pull off a very similar push. Madman is going for a clear, but again, they're being as quick as they can. Want to start putting pressure against the armory. Ison suffers from Astro, and there's the wide quick reactions from Madman, but not quick enough as easy. Locks him down. Astro has suffered a huge amount of damage, but Fipsy finds sets and brings it back to a 3 3 down in Zulu. Now they're just trying to clear up a small tower and start putting pressure across the big window. Fibsy moving through onto the small tower, see what he can do as soon as you see. Big tower is uh, looking. I don't think the dock is in there anymore. No, he's not. But obviously, clearly, they don't know that. Still, poor drone work coming out from Epsilon. If they're still looking over there, and they haven't just positioned a drone in T2. But. Fibsy, he's going to try and make his way up onto the white stairs and he is destroying the bar with white. Self control here, don't think anyone really knows he's here, but no more wings. He just takes it out onto the destroyed mirror window. He is just take down Astro and that's all down to Milan in a 1v3. But this man, he's clutchable, he's winnable, he can do it all. As he pushes all the way up into the top of white, we'll see the smoke, we'll see the wall, oh, the great headshot coming off from Milan, tries to find another. But no, Ease won't let him have it. Dizlan take round number eight. And this is looking very dire for Epsilon. 3-3 uh, three, three to 5-3. But obviously it was a 3-3 three, three balance last time. So it's not completely over yet. We could find ourselves being crawled back. And if there was a point to start making that mark, it could be the one we're about to find. Rear stage and watchtower. Now this is one where you've got to be a bit creative with your defense. Mira is on the board as well. And she's being picked, which I'm sure you are over the moon. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about Extremes game where we saw Mirror all the time. He wasn't banned, but we hardly ever saw her picked. So, yeah, it is good to see a Mirror brought here. But we are going to go to Big Tower, as you said. I'm interested to see what Mirrors they want to do. I would guess, right, they're going to do the Mirror that I was talking about initially with, like, facing onto the east door. Yep. And then they're going to do the mirror in meeting hall facing into rear stage. Or maybe not. Uh, Looks like uh, an attic. Yeah, I was seeing. I think they're going to set one up in the attic. Potentially, if they have the ADS there to cover anyone trying to grenade in cheekily from the attic, I think this gives them just a little bit more control over the pushes that we did go for a bit earlier. Um, obviously, they know Milan has been playing Twitch pretty continually, and having that cracked open has been a pretty bad spot. So I guess it's a hard place for a Twitch to get if they do it properly, but you, know, you never know with Milan. He's somehow managed to do some pretty crazy things with his drones. He's still zapping easy. Just doesn't Is he going to get back on his drone and try and do it again? The drone's still in sight. This is a really weird mirror. I don't know how you feel about this. So I was right about the meeting hall mirror. But the 
here is really weird. I don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah, they've kind of got a second story stack by the looks of it, so they can kind of just play inside meeting and have oh, Attic as a bit of control, but it means you've got to dedicate a lot to it to keep your eyes across the board, because as soon as they start to find either meeting or Attic, they'll start to break everything apart, and it does keep you a fair amount of eyes, but you can see that sets and eyes are both on the far side. Easy is the one playing the top of T3 is the castle. Good decision, but there goes Milan and Fipsy. Quick response there. Yeah, great response coming out there, but there he is now a 4v3 situation. Epsilon are really lagging behind right now. Not looking too good for them. They've lost the hard reach and they've lost Milan as well. Shame is going to drop off, but the fact that the mirror isn't where I said you know it normally is means they don't really have too much control of this east side for that uh, push and plant. I mean, like, you know, it could go badly here, especially if they kill this guy on the meeting hall mirror, but they're not able to. And it is a mistake down. Madman just get pushed again, but he gets another kill, Jeremy! No! But there we go, Astro finally trades him out. It's a 1v3, and Astro does not have the diffuser. Unfortunately, it was dropped in meeting hall on Shermy. This is really bad situation. I feel like if you're going to push like this, Astro should have had the diffuser, but... No matter now, I suppose, if that show is going to move through onto the big tower rear stage stairs. As you're trying to make his way up onto T3, sees someone, but can't find the headshot just yet. And Sets will trade him out. That's match point for Dislan now, and series point as well. They take the round, they secure themselves $2,500 in prize pool. They can pull it out, because at the minute, Epsilon needs something. They have kind of fallen back into themselves. We're not seeing that same aggression and creativity that has really been a focal point of their successes earlier in the day. We're going to go to Kitchen for try and flex across all of them and give it another go, but pretty standard lineup here. Jackal is currently on the board for the first time. Banned out previously, but at 6th, the Valkyrie is going to be which is a fair choice there, especially with, I think, what we've seen from Dislown is more and more aggression. More and more kind of, of these peaks and picks outside, and a lot of comfort on Oregon. Yeah, there definitely is a lot of comfort on Oregon. I think for both teams, though, honestly, with, like, how aggressive and confident they've both been, the dining hall defense is interesting from Dislown now, uh, especially because they don't have a mirror here. Opted for Valks and Echoes instead. Curious to see if they throw anything on vertical above as well, but they're doing the old familiar dig in there of Bandit with the uh, reinforced wheel, although they. Uh, reinforced wall? Not wheel. Um, although they have reinforced the close rotation wall as well, so they're going to put an Echo in there. The castle just to keep a little bit more control over that corridor as well. See if they do anything on the lockers. Along the top there, where he's and uh, against the rest there, uh, why is the Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait and see as the rookdowns come out from Ease, and they will throw a Valkyrie Cameron out just above highway there onto the big tower. Let's see what they can do from there with that. Free fires coming down, just opening up all the windows from Epsilon. The Shem is taking the Jackal. First time we've seen a Jackal today, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, first. Okay. Even though we, they banned out Jackal, well, they, they removed Jackal. They said they don't want to play with Jackal and Villa, but hey, on Oregon, he's our guy. And I guess this is when you got to start changing things up. Astro already in on showers, putting some pressure towards the point. But he's actually going to back out there. And they're going to keep the for now and get a bit more control. Passing underneath, but there is the run out from Valk from deep. Nothing comes of it though, unfortunately, and Astro has gone back to try and hold showers. Shami is looking for that footprint, sees it and wants it, but Fipsy in the meantime finds easy, and that is Echo off the board, and that is a big take, because even earlier today, we have seen Echo win at this point. There's also no IQ coming out from Epsilon, so that could have been a really big issue, but Fipsy again with a nice kill, but Rykos doesn't let Shami have any feetsies. And he's going to take him down appropriately. That's also a potential flank route now onto Small Tower. But Astro makes his way all the way in. Aza going down. There's no bandit tricking now available. And there's just 
about halfway into the round as uh, Asho is going to try and push up on Zulu. But Ease is going to take down Fipsy and end his kill spree. Reichels is going to hop all the way through, just rotate through to the white stairs. He goes for the pre fire, but Milan doesn't let him have it. It's all down to Ease in a 3v1. Still Nitro available for him right now. He sees Astro, but he can't confirm the kill. Epsilon, take round number 10. Still an uphill battle for them, though, to bring this to OT. Yeah, because they do have Laundry and both available, I believe, at this play on to both points so that they have done very well. Dorms, I would say, more so than their hold on Laundry. And there they go, straight to Dorms. Try and round this out. Six, but it wouldn't be the first overtime today, if you can believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all for the first time. <laughs> it could have gone well. It could have gone well. But Kids, Dorms, and Tom's main hall will be the defense chance here for Dizla to try and bring it in. Could be interesting. The way we enter, I believe, our seventh now as we find ourselves. And right, let's go for the center spire and Cover the mattress. Obviously, Maverick is on the board alongside the Havana. They're still changing things up and trying new things. Madman is now playing on the Thatcher instead of Astro. Um, and uh, Shami has taken, obviously, the Maverick. And you've already said it yourself. Epsilon is obviously the jungle. Operators, they love to keep changing things up, keep trying different things, and saying, I want to try this and I want to try that. And time to try and make it work. Armory is getting solidly reinforced there as well. I don't think they played in there too much. So there was a little bit of closing down, and it looks like Rikos is going to start pushing towards the opening up. Uh, Attic as Ease is going to head to the top of tower. Obviously, earlier they did manage to get a spawn pick from uh, the tower. Are they going to be lucky? But it looks like they are wasting no time, Epsilon. Not wasting any time at all. I think he threw that EMP a little too deep, and he got caught by the ADS. But Jimmy is going to be able to get the kill onto Easy, but instantly traded out by his teammate of Ease and Milan again with an entry. Deep down Ease. And Fipsy! Beautiful kills coming out here in the walk in closet, coming out onto Sets, who's been one of the top fraggers from this line, and all of a sudden, we're in a 4v2. See, obviously. A bit more pressure coming against eyes in there. Mira has to pull back just a little bit. The drones are coming out, but they are under a huge amount of stress, trials, and tribulations. You can hear the barbed wire being broken. You're going to have to pull even further deeper into the point, but pressure is coming from those kids' dorms with those as well. Rykos is looking for a cheeky shotgun pick, but all this is doing is distracting. But Eisen digs deep and finds Milan from range. There is a minute 40 left. So much time in this round for both teams to come up with something but for the defenders at this moment the plan seems to just be hold it on the as Ash and Astro starts to dig by a walk-in to try and get a cleaner entrance to the point. Yeah and lots of drones are going of course going to be coming out here onto Armory Corridor. Madman has moved his way onto the double windows. This is probably the play honestly. He can just do what he wants there. He isn't very, very, very low on HP right now. His drones are going to be coming out to the site. Rikos, however, is still holding out onto the kids' dorms to see what he can do. Flashbands coming out. And the push comes in. Fitzy takes down Aza, but Rikos with a nitro is going to take down Fitzy. Goes for the pre fire, does down Madman. And it's all down to Astro in a 1v1. Rikos drops off. He does have a shotgun available, so he could actually still push this out. Looks like the revive is going to go through rather poor tiring, but almost a right to the clutch. Uh, so Madman is going to get revived. Astro with the diffuser now could go for the plant as Rykos pushes up onto White says They know this is the only way he has to go through. Let's go hold it down. What? Rykos with a great pre fire takes out Madman before he can really do anything. Astro with the plant, however, is going to try and hold it down onto Kid Storms. Rikos just playing very, very patiently, waiting for any rotates, waiting for his opportunity to strike. Moves all the way through. Asher is still playing very, very patiently into the kids' dorms. He's taking a very close angle and sees what he can do. He's on the wrong way and he sees Rikos. Rikos sees him back and he takes him down. Astro clutches the round and Epsilon take round number 11. They're just one round away from bringing us into overtime. Well, that was as close as close can be. 
almost pulled it off with the rotation down. Had the man down and managed to pick them off as well. But great play from Astro to stick the diffuser and get that down. Put it into a post-plant situation and give yourself a little bit more of a chance of winning. Put a bit more stress and a bit more pressure onto the defender. 6-5. They are far from over. And we said it was 3-3 at the split. And it looks like it might be 3-3 at the split yet again. These two teams, it was 3-3 and 3-3 in the previous one as well. <laughs> it's actually crazy how close these games have been. Mm -hmm. I don't. I from all the games so far, I don't ever remember any of them being this back and forth. I don't know what to say at this point. <laughs> it's just been so close overall as a play day. You think with the top four teams in CCS, at least like the first versus four seed would be pretty you know out there but wow it uh it really isn't it really I'm isn't curious to see how na games go as well yeah if, if if they go into overtime all i am going to be thinking is whoever is casting the finals tomorrow with the chance at unlimited ot yeah good luck yeah what kind of idiot would sign up for that right? yeah what kind of fool would sign up to unlimited ot when these teams are so bitterly Stop worrying about grenades now. That's gonna hold down onto the backside mirror, but it looks like Epsilon are going for the big tower take. Let's see what they can do with all that. Diffuser does get dropped. It seems to be Astro piece it up. Nope. Who's gonna be the diffuser holder here? Oh, no, no, no. oh no one. Yeah, that could work as well. Yeah, then bring it. Slows you down. Yeah. Asho is going to start to push up as sets and he's going to be playing around the blue, making sure that no one can push that aggressively up onto that back side tank. This has been most of the pushes on Oregon today. I think mostly because of the Capital back. Right? Without a Capital, really not a lot you can do here. Sets is going to win out against Astro, however, as Shami himself is actually going to go down. Wait, no, what? Is this man on one HP? He just gets a headshot? I guess he just doesn't. Yeah. Bait, you know, so you gotta be bold. Oh, no. He is he can he did, withstand, he but they have plenty of time to go and get it. Milan is wanting to clear Attic before they start to do anything too severe. Though obviously Sets has suffered but has escaped with his life, and that is the most important bit of this, especially as we already talked about how well he has been playing on this map, especially this is the place and the point of what we need that to do. But put some bullets into the shoulder. Um of the approaching Havana. I'm not even sure if they entirely knew that they were going to pull that off. They must have actually. It was Echo. The drone was getting the information. And that was brilliant teamwork. But hatches are being cracked open now. L and Electric are clear for them to take. And previously they did this with a Ying as the front of the push. But they do not have that as their option now. They're going to have to find another way to crack into this point. Shame is going to be pushing down onto this whole way of sets with the pre-fire down as the boiler he is going to take down Shemi to downtown as well as Madman now injured. It's all down to Fipsy and Milan to try and bring this in. It's all oh, all the marbles right now. As there we go, Fipsy does get the entry onto set. Beautiful entry kill that they needed. No, Azen, how do you not know? How do you let that happen? He's, however, is going to bring it in. Milan goes down. It's all down to Fipsy. He does have control of the B site, but he's got to do it. He does not have control of the diffuser. He sees one, but no! It's going to be easy. He does take it down with a shotgun. Dislav took right number 12, and they'll eventually win out. They hit the series. Wow, what a series. It has been almost the fourth map of the day in Max OT. They fought tooth and nail for this prize pool, but surprise, surprise, the fight is not over 